Boom. We are now recording. There we go. Ha, I did oh, it. That is smart. Okay, that's another thing. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. We, are, um, we are recording right everyone now. Everyone should clap individually. At the same can. time? Not at the same time, but uh, like, or I mean, you could be the same time, but it, it actually help. It would help me if everyone clapped individually. All right, here we go. Uh, three, ready? two, one. No, hang on. Hang, who goes first? All of us. We're going to do it at the same Let's time. Let's do it at the same time. Three, yeah. two, one. Two. one. Perfect. Nailed right. it. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but that'll help, actually, I think, because, uh, um, yeah, it's, it can be hard to... I can line yours up perfectly, and I can yeah. line the wine up perfectly. Yeah. But in the other cams, sometimes they're off by, like, a you know, millisecond. Include this. This right is right info people want to hear. Is, this they want to hear this. This yeah. is the, the backstory stuff. Yeah. Is the camera on, by the way? Everything's I, on. I don't see any lights. Boom. That one. But so what about that everything's one? That recording. One, that one. Everything's recording, but that's the one I have up on my screen. And that's oh. the one I, I, I screenshot with to do our thumbnail nice yeah okay all right here we go hey everybody welcome to episode 25 of the bjj foxcast i'm your host alex martinez and today i have a very special guest the guy behind the scene tojo not you idiot no. <laughs> steven shackleford he is our um he is uh, my partner in this and he is our editor um he's the one that makes me look and sound way better than i am and again i have my brother tojo on the show welcome guys thanks for having me man yeah. Good to be on. Yeah. This is exciting, man. Episode 25. Who yeah. would have thought? Huge. Who would have thought? Well, I mean, you just kind of like getting a black belt. You just got to keep coming. <clears throat> just got to keep showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I read a lot about, you know, before we got into into podcasting, I read about um, why people stop doing it, right? They call mm. it pod fatigue and people just get tired of like mm -hmm. getting, you know, trying to get guests in and trying to, you know, figure out subjects to talk about and all that stuff. No, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it way too much. That's what's so exciting for me about this actually is um, that you like you did all this like on your own, right? Like yeah. I, you and I kind of um, started talking about it like early on. And that was one of the things. So the way this kind of all started was like last December. Yeah. Uh, I, I met with you and the Aries crew and um, my company, which like we'll get to eventually is, uh, you know, interest. It was kind of looking at transitioning and doing content. Um, cause I believe that, that I think every brand in the future is going to need content as mm -hmm. part of their social media, part of their marketing. Um, it's just, it's just a really valuable thing you to mean have podcasting nowadays. content, not just podcasting content, but like, uh, but video content skits, like just some <laughs> kind of content that they, that they can put out, um, is I think it's going to be a real part, like an uh, important part of marketing yeah. Yeah. Um, for companies in the future. Um, people this, like to know like what people are actually like, cause you know, everyone puts on that front, but like you put an hour or two hours on of us talking together, it's like you can't act. For that <laughs> no, yeah. Even if you have yeah. a facade, it will fall away at some point. Yeah, because you're just you're in the room. We like to facilitate that a little quicker than yes. others. Yeah, we take a shortcut. <laughs> um, so I had come to you and the Aries crew and and said, just said, my company is interested in doing content. We don't really know a lot about it, but we know that it's important. And so let's. I, I want to see if you guys want to try to experiment with some stuff. And we had some ideas. Nothing really got off the ground, but um, you and I were talking. Like you had talked about we talked about doing a podcast and we actually yeah. have two, two hidden episodes on my hard drive where you tell the, um, you tell the bud story. Yes. And you tell it really well. It's so good, dude. Um, Thank you. And we record that one in the Academy. So it's actually in front of the, in front of the Aries logo on the maps. That's and everything. right. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. So what happened early on is we were trying, we're, again, we were experimenting. We didn't quite know what it was going to be, what we we're going to do. And Steven brought the entire set up his entire like mixing board and everything into the academy we put down the um the little puzzle mats and put a table hey, do you up want to censor yeah. that out because amy's gonna hear this what are you talking about and she's gonna know it's his fault that this happened <laughs> well she already blames you because you and i talked about it you know two and a half years ago yeah, but we, were we were drunk we were drunk <laughs> that's how all the great backyard. ideas if you're either drunk or you're stone that's where the best ideas come oh, we were from. drunk Agreed. and eaten by mosquitoes i remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but um yeah we brought your whole setup and there's just something about throwing the headphones on and getting a microphone in front of somebody. Yeah. The shyest person, we we're just talking about Paul Nava being shy. He just shined, man. He did He did really well. Um, it's just something about throwing the headphones on. You know, when I first got my very first podcast set up, it was a lot like this, right? A lot of the same stuff. But I had it downstairs in my dining room. Mm. And Amy was, I, I don't know, we were just sitting there. It was one of those evenings where we like had some time together. And I said, hey, you got to try this. Just put the headphones on. And we literally sat and had an hour and a half conversation. I wish I would. I wish I would recorded it. He never talks to his wife ever. <laughs> I, ever, ever. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, babe. So, um, yeah, we we sat there and we had a conversation. There's just something about putting the headphones on. There right? is. Yeah, it's. Well, I think part of it is um, people don't 
have those kind of conversations anymore. Mm -hmm. Like we live in a world now, especially I think my generation and below where people are not connected anymore. Yeah. And like, you know, like it's, I don't know. I sound like an old man, but it's like, everyone's on their phones. Everyone's looking here. No one's yeah. looking at every, everything else. And you just, I mean, how often do you, especially like when you have kids, when you have a job, how often do you have time to just sit and talk to someone for two hours? Rarely. Just, and have a two hour conversation and with intention too, because when the head, when you're putting the headphones on, you're sitting in front of the mic, you're here to have a conversation. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to do anything else. My phone's on silent. Yep. Like I'm not going to look at it. And like you, when you put the headphones on, you get engrossed, I yeah. think. And uh, you get to have a really cool, deep conversation. Yeah. And yeah. people don't do that anymore. It kind of like compartmentalizes <laughs> like just this event. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love true. it. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you. Yeah. Because you, you are the X factor. Uh, I've had way too many podcasts with this cat in the room. Two? Three? Two? Way too many. That's Cam. He's <laughs> the one who keeps track. <laughs> this is two. This is two, I think. This is three. No, this, this is three. at least yeah, three. Yeah. One, one in ten. Yeah. Hey, on. One in yeah. ten. Uh, the, the listeners should be annoyed because I didn't finish the story. So the story goes <laughs> that uh, we, we did that ex some experimentation, and then, um, you know, like, we kind of just, like, you know, we got busy, we put it on the shelf. I had a second kid. Yep. Um, which I very cockily was like, I'll be back on the mats in like a week, probably like we'll keep everything moving. And then three months later I showed up like, uh, uh, yeah. you know, like, like hadn't yeah. slept for so long, but, um, you started just doing stuff on your own. Yeah. And this, you took this way further than I even imagined. I mean, this, the setup here and, uh, we have to put a picture actually out on social media sometimes yeah. so people can see the full setup, but it's so professional. I've told you that I've seen other podcasts on YouTube that are just getting started yeah. a couple of jujitsu ones. And it's, it's just like not the same quality. I mean, you yeah. really, you've said before, like when you get into something, you go all in. I'm, I'm and, 100%. And, and that is but, true. But I, but I pick my spots. You know yes. what I mean? Like, um, you know, years ago I got in tri into triathlon. And this is right before I met Amy. And I got into triathlon and I went all in. I mean, I, you know, tri bike and, you know, signing up for all these races and doing my thing. And luckily she was super supportive, you know, after she, you know, I was almost said came on board after we met and started dating. <laughs> but, uh, but then, you know, when I started jujitsu, she was super supportive as well. It was after she was done with, with, uh, with nursing school. So I, you know, it helped a little bit because we had a little bit more time, but then, you know, I was sitting in, uh, Milton Bastos, um, uh, dining room and, uh, this is in Nashville. And, uh, there was a guy sitting across from me talking about, you know, he does, uh, he works in the music industry and he helps mix, you know, s songs and do beats. And I just asked him, I was like, Hey, can you do a beat for uh, like a, an intro to a podcast? And he goes, yeah. He's like, whose podcast? And I said, mine. And Amy gave me this look like, what? And I was like, yeah, as soon as we get back. And that's where it started, man. Yeah. So I just went through and, you know, I spent hours and hours and hours, you know, just researching, you know, which podcasts are doing the best, right? Yeah. Obviously, Joe Rogan is like the number one guy, but there's also other people that are out there like doing a lot of really good how-tos. Um, so I uh, think media was giant because they talk like specifics, like, you know, microphones and lights and, you know, sound and, you know, just yeah. you name it, you know, and, and, you know, I just started watching videos and be like, okay, that's a good idea. And then, you know, I got some lights and then, you know, I, I made one mistake. Well, one of many, um, you know, I got the big arm, uh, microphone yeah. holder mm -hmm. and that really limits you on how much you can work cameras. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, so again, researching the, 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 the videos that really hit have like almost eye level cameras. OK, so if you have something that's way too high, it like people kind of get disconnected from you. They're almost like hovering over you. They want to be like in your face. Right. When we're talking, they want to be like in the conversation. Yeah. Right. So the higher the cameras, the worse it gets. But then you got this big arm and the camera here. No good. Right. So I got these lower profile uh, camera arms and just little things like that, that that uh, really, really got my brain going. And I can't stop myself once I get going. It's not like I'm being pulled. It's like I'm falling. Yeah. You know. And I think that's what's so exciting for me is like, I just, I know that this is going to be successful because you're just, you're so passionate about it. And you're, I just don't, like you said, like pod fatigue, like, I don't think it's going to yeah. happen for you. Like you have mm -hmm. so much fun doing it yeah. and that's the right reason to do it, yeah. right? Like you're passionate about it. You're going to keep doing it. Even if it never makes a dime, you'll keep doing it. But the thing is by continuing to show up and being consistent, it, eventually it will hit yeah. and, and it will grow. And, and 10 years from now, you know, like I think it's going to be a huge success. So, I hope so. I, I'm super excited to be a part of it because I'm like, you know, like I've learned more about producing and like uh, developing yeah. content. And when you find someone like yourself, who's just so focused and, and into it, I'm like, I'm like, I got it right on the first try. Let's go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I love um, it. So I'm yeah. excited, man. I'm really excited for where it's going to go in the future. Yeah. On so. the note of like the technology and like different podcasts and different structures and formats and stuff. Uh, let me ask your opinion on this. Um, how much of it do you think is it, 
is it the technology and stuff? Because, like, I mean, obviously, like, oh, I'm Alex. Like, should I buy this? Hell yeah! I'm always <laughs> like, I don't even care what it is. Fuck yeah, buy it. Try yeah. it. Find out. Let's find out. Yeah. How much of it is it? Is the technology and how much of it is more like, uh, or how much? Do you, I guess your opinion is what I'm asking. Um, is like the format of it? Because I've I've listened to some podcasts, which I'm just like, it, it's it seems like a like a work interview, you mm-hmm. know, and you're yeah. just like. I can't listen. I to can't this. listen to this. Yeah. Shit. Like I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I always tell people, like when we talk about this, it was like I think what because people always like talk about our episodes yeah. together. And yeah. It's like because Alex and I have known each other for so long that like when we have our podcast, he's not interviewing me. We've asked the interview questions. Where our first date was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like yeah. when we're on uh, when we're talking here, it's it's like we're just shooting the shit. Yep. Yes. And like and that's like the you know that's I think that's what a lot of people get from like the JRE. You know, it's like it's all conversational. It's not an interview per se. Even, yeah. Even though like one person is kind of like leading, asking questions, but it's not necessarily like, you know, it's more conversational than it is like a formal interview. How much of it do you think is that that how you have the conversation versus like all the technology? Because the technology stuff, like I think, does help. Like, because you can. I mean, you can't just like do this off of an iPhone, but like you can. But you can. Yeah. You can absolutely yeah. can. Yeah. I just chose not to eat the mic. Yeah. Eat, eat the mic. <laughs> eat the mic. Eat, eat the it. Mic. Yeah. There you Come go. here, Mike. <clears throat> yeah. I always yeah. say if you can't hear yourself, they can't hear you. That's, that's right. That's what I like to say. Um, I can always hear yeah. myself. That's no, true. That, that's a really good point, man. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You were going to answer the question. He was asking I was asked, so him. the question is how My much bad. is it yeah, technology yeah. versus like content? F- content yeah. format, yeah. I think it's I think it's both. Um, you absolutely can do it off of an iPhone, and that's kind of what's cool about it. Like the, the really cool thing about So I've listened to podcasts. So you spent too much money. I did. Okay. I've listened to podcasts since I was... 13 years old. Okay. Um, this what, was, what was your first podcast? My first podcast was called, um, so it, the very first one I listened to was uh, The Instance, and it was a World of Warcraft podcast. Okay, okay. Um, and it was just all about like, just these guys would get together every week and they would just shoot the shit about World of Warcraft, what's going on in the game and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and from there, I was like, man, this is really interesting. So I started looking at podcasts. My second one was called The Definitive Word. Oh. And it was a British philosophy podcast. Oh my gosh. And they would choose a word and it'd be like 30 minutes and they would just talk about the word and all of the different aspects. It was very like interesting. It's really It sounds like one of those like NPR type. Yeah, it was very <laughs> NPR. So yeah. yeah, so I've been like, I've been deep in podcasting ever since I was a kid before anyone even knew what it was. Like yeah. when, you know, like I remember when Kevin Smith started his podcast and he was one of the huge ones uh, and, and he doesn't do it as much anymore, but like he really kind of like led the way in podcasting back in the day. So, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I would say to answer your question, it's, you can do it from an iPhone and that's one of the cool things about it is, yeah. is, is, Fundamentally, the content's the most important thing. If the content sure, is yeah. good, if if it's if it's authentic and um it's in, and it's interesting, then people will listen, even if the quality is not that yeah. great. Now, sometimes the quality can be so shitty where you're just like, I, I can't, I can't. Especially with how everyone has like high resolution headphones and stuff. Like everyone's yeah. got ear ear like AirPods and stuff. Like, yeah. I think they like, hear Alex coughing the whole time. What? I yeah. have my cough you know button. What? Shut you up. Did, should drink some water. No, I got uh, whiskey. I got whiskey. I'm good. All right, thank you. Got it. Water will lubricate your throat. What are you, a doctor? (laughs) I also studied vocal performance for 10 years. (laughs) All right, so so kind of. know. Right Um, on. I'll just uh, shut up now. Yeah, (laughs) fuck me. (laughs) Um, So, uh, yeah, I, I I think content is probably the most important thing. Um, like if you don't have that, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're, you will not, you just won't hit with people because if, because right. if it's not interesting and, if, and most importantly, if it's not authentic, like you can do an interview style show, but I think in those hard, hard interview style shows have a, have a ceiling. Yeah. If, sure. If you're, it's always just like you and you're sitting down and you're asking, like, I have my pre-prepared questions and now I'll ask them to you and I will not dig further on anything that you say. Cause I'm on a time limit. Like that's the problem with traditional media. And I feel like yeah. those are sinking too, right? Like oh, yeah. that's like not yeah. what people want anymore. Yeah. Right. Or and, if they even ever wanted it yeah i mean rogan says this all the time but like when you like when people try to go on cnn or whatever and they have three minutes and like they're trying to cram it all in like mm-hmm. it just people don't want that people they want long like they love long form podcasts yeah. and they yeah. don't have to listen to the whole thing in one go like you know i'll listen to an episode of like like an episode of rogan and it's three hours and i get 30 minutes in here 15 minutes in here. I just throw it on when I'm doing housework so fundamentally content's the most important thing but i don't think i think that you will have you will have more success faster if the technology piece is there. Yeah. If you're using video, I think nowadays if a podcast doesn't have video, it's going to have a tough time growing. Yeah. Be- between TikTok, Instagram, um, and and YouTube, the like the discoverability on those platforms is so good that like there's if you if you don't have some kind of video, is that asset, like part of like like the immersion factor? I think it's just it's just where everybody's finding their content now. Yeah. Um. So 
so YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind Google. Mm -hmm. TikTok is third behind that. And wow. it's giving YouTube a run for its money. So much so that um, I've, so I have a friend who's a, who's a really well-known YouTuber. His name's Ludwig. Uh, he has 3 million subscribers on YouTube. He's a, he's a big <laughs> deal. Um, he actually started out, he went to college here in Arizona and he started out coming to um, events that my company runs. And then he kind of like just totally blew up from there. But he went to a summit that was like a hundred of the biggest YouTube creators. And they were talking about how they told them like, we're going to push shorts. We're trying to kill TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So like we want everyone to be doing shorts. And their thing is like, any channel that's consistent with shorts can have a million subscribers in a, few, in se in a couple of years because yeah, yeah. because that's that's just how it is. I mean, everybody's every, it's all about like that kind of short form, quick content. Mm -hmm. Everyone's scrolling their phones, uh, like t and TikTok consumable is, content. Yeah, really yeah, consumable. Definitely. And so I think that the video component is is like really important. It's not so much the immersion; it's just how people find things. Like yeah. I don't think there are a lot of people looking up, like going on. I for one thing. I, I'm, I'm impressed by this, but uh, I don't think anyone's really going on iTunes on, on the iTunes store to look for podcasting where it's all Spotify. Sure. Spotify getting the Rogan deal really sank yeah. um, app, it sank the, uh, the Apple podcasts for me. Because like Spotify has all, same, all the same stuff as Apple. Yeah. So I listen to Rogan and I listen to a couple of other things. They're all on Spotify. I, just, I only listen to Spotify. I think now. most of the podcasts that I listen to or I should say consume are usually via YouTube. Honestly. Yeah, me yep. too. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I think YouTube. a lot of people are not going out and saying new podcast, <coughs> but like they're not looking for a new podcast, but um, but they are on YouTube and they are seeing shorts. They are seeing recommendations. They out there, they're feeding the algorithm sure. and that's how they find people. Yeah. yeah. One one uh, podcast that I found, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the first podcast I listened to, but uh, one podcast that I found recently was uh, John Barenthal. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's an actor mm -hmm. and um, he had a guy named uh, Richard Cabral on there. And I think I've watched that podcast five times. Really? I've watched it five times. And every single time I watch it, I'm like, this is a freaking great podcast. Not only the, I mean, not only the content, right? Or, or the, uh, the, the host, because he's a really good interviewer. I love John Barenthal. He's yeah. great. He's awesome. Yeah, because what he'll do is, um, one thing that I'm lacking, because I listen to a lot of podcasts, even ones that I'm not interested in, just to hear the style of interview. Yep. And what he does better than anybody, I think, today, is he'll just, you know, say more, say more of that. Why? Yeah. You know, just, you know, tell, tell, you know, explain a little bit about more about that where you and I, or at least me, I'll go in there and I'll say, okay, you know, ask a question. They tell me your piece. Cool. We move on. He stays on that subject a lot longer, man. He goes, he gets really deep and he's mm -hmm. getting like, you know, this guy was a former gang member is now an actor, mm -hmm. all that stuff. He was on Mayans and stuff like that, that Richard Cabral, but his backstory could have ended with like maybe 30 minutes. It was like an hour and 15, yeah. right? Just because it, the, the whys and explain more and talk more about that. I love those. Well, every what has a why, right? right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So um, the very first podcast that I listened to was uh, Zen and the Art of Triathlon. I don't know if the guy's still on. I've tried to find him, but uh, it was excellent because mm -hmm. it was like he would do like podcasts like um, he'd have show notes on this. Um, <clears throat> you know what? Um, what are those bunny suits that people use like uh, in labs and stuff? What is that? The, the Just like a Tyvek, the Tyvek material. Oh, yeah. so he had he had like Tyvek like material for his for his show notes because all of his uh podcasts were either on a run or on a bike or something like Whoa. that yeah so he would just talk about different subjects on a bike because when you're doing triathlon you're you're doing six hour seven hour rides you know you're doing 100 yeah. mile rides so i mean he would just have this you know two hour podcast you know edited and it was all audio back then yeah and um then he did a podcast where it was like outtakes and some of them were like, you know, a swarm of bees that he rode into while he's on his bike, <laughs> shit like that. It was freaking awesome. But, I mean, I, you know, that was the first exposure I had. That was maybe like 2009, yeah, something like that, 2008, something like that. And, you know, I thought, what a great idea, but I never considered doing one myself. Like, people don't realize, like, you've got a story to tell. Yes. I don't care what, you know, walk of life you're in. You've got a story to tell. I mean, Richard Cabral, he was literally facing a life sentence. Right. And, and one really cool thing that he said was he's sitting across from a, you know, a very well-known actor and he goes, I did this with 200 bucks. That's what they gave him when he got out of prison, mm -hmm. 200 bucks. Wow. And now I'm here. I'm like, wow. So everybody has a story to tell. I love yes. this. And that's something you and I talked about early on. And that's something we've, we've hit on like really early when we were thinking about the show was like, it was, I, like, I agree with that. I think everybody has a story to tell. Yeah. And, I mean, so like I, I spend a lot of time thinking there. Have you ever heard of the concept of Sonder? 
which is the realization that everybody is, is a, unique, a unique entity living their own lives with their own struggles and their yeah. own story. Yeah. Like I think about that a lot when I smoke weed and, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think, I mean, it, it really is true. I mean, like the human experience is so complex and everyone has so many trials and tribulations. And it's one of the cool things about jujitsu too, is like, seeing everyone from all different walks of life come together and share this common bond. I mean, we have, yeah. I've seen like guys who I'm like, this guy was a gangbanger at some mm -hmm, point mm -hmm. and I've seen, and then there's dudes like me who was just like some nerd who had never done <laughs> like much athletic at all in his life. And, yeah. and I'm, and I'm there and we're sharing an experience and we're talking to each other and learning about each other. And like, yeah, I think everyone has a story to tell. And I love, I love capturing those stories. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Me too, man. And you know, I have the, uh, I'm, I'm in a very unique position because being an academy owner, I hear those stories like mm -hmm. right off the bat. Oh yeah. You know, we set up appointments to meet with people and just hearing like, you know, you know, maybe someone was a victim of, of an assault, you know, or was in like a really rough relationship or, and, and they're just looking for something to an outlet, you know, they're, it's not necessarily, they want to, you know, avenge, you know, avenge, avenge the wrong, yeah. you know, but they just want an outlet. I mean, they're, they're, they're struggling with something inside. I think we all are. And jujitsu is just a, an amazing way to let it all out. You know, it's a really good form of self-expression. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk about you for a second. Okay. All right. You're 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 one of my white belts. Yes. Right. I, I, I believe I have the distinction of being the lowest ranking belt to have come on this show so far. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, yeah. Way to go. First nice. white belt, well, baby. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some non-belted people. <clears throat> Were there? Uh, no, everybody's done jujitsu. Even the, I thought you had the, your doctor... Trent Nessler, yeah. he's a brown belt. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah he's a brown belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how he got, like, really uh, I immersed to that in that episode, life. totally. He did not look. This is the one guy that doesn't <laughs> listen to the show. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's been we're, on the most. We're talking downstairs, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You son of I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to cuss this episode, but you're starting to piss me off. Well, I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for you to get popular enough for me to have arguments in your comments. Oh, that'll be good. Because then I'll, I'll definitely help Oh, that's going to be so uh, funny. I can't Don't ever, haters. you let him read the comments. Don't do it yourself. Man. Right, it's yeah, not, yeah. It's not yeah. worth it. Oh, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> <jokes>. <laughs> You're going to have a heyday. Well, that's one of the things is eventually, like, I'm sure controversy will come. Yeah. Like, I'm sure somebody will say something or we'll have a controversial guest eventually. And like, but you know, the thing is that that generates views. Like, I don't think it's good to be controversial for the sake of controversy. Yeah. But one Listen. of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I appreciate uh, about Rogan is that he will have controversial people on yeah. just to talk to them and yeah. hear what they have to say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, eventually, and there's always, man, the internet's just full of shitters. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird because like you, you put this thing out there and you're like, all right, I'm going to put this out there and you ha just have to remember like I, it's what I care about is how many people are watching and how long are they watching for that's yeah, yeah. right are they Same. consuming the content yeah and that but there's always some guy who like and I don't get it I don't leave comments like right. I, I just I'm not a commenter Me I've either. even had times where I'm like I should leave a comment and I can't bring myself to do it I just don't yeah. care enough <laughs> we have a listener who's like very respectful okay but does leave comments but he'll leave like you know at one hour and eight minutes I disagree with this and then he'll start going on. I'm like, wow, he listened for an hour and eight minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. You're like, thanks so, for your listen. Whoever yeah. you are. Yeah. I always thank people for their comment, no matter what it is. And, you know, it, it just is what it is, man. We're not going to appeal to everybody. Thank God. You no, know you what can't. I mean? You it's can't. okay. There's too many people out there. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's funny because, like, if you look at what really draws attention is controversy. Like, mm -hmm. if you piss enough people off. You will be popular. Well, I mean, it's just like the whole like Yelp review, you review, Google review, Amazon review. It's like no one's commenting on something unless it pissed them off. Right. No yeah. one's going to like leave a review unless it pissed them off like it broke or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's like if you're happy with your product, you're usually all right. Cool. I don't have to whatever. say anything. Yeah. 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 I always I, I love the uh, the uh, or you're an asshole. Yeah, or you're an asshole. I like the reviews. Like, I always read the the one-star reviews just to see what people leave. I always, that's all I care about. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the five-star reviews because it's just like yeah. people being like, yeah. oh, it worked. Yeah. Like, cool. But the one-star reviews that I, I love the most are like, oh, the box was hard to open. Oh, I fucking hate You don't own a knife, dude? Half <laughs> like, of it, yeah, half of it was like, oh, it, it showed up late. I was like, like, that's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite. Yeah. But let's talk about you. So okay. uh, let's talk about your 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 day job, okay? Mm -hmm. Um. What do you do and how did you get into that? So I run a company called SAK Gaming, um, which is a uh, esports um, organization and production company. So we organize uh, competitive video game tournaments around the valley. Um, and then we do production for um, our own events plus events like uh, nationally. 
Um, like I'm going to California next weekend for an event called Main Stage in Ontario. Um, and that that's probably going to have like... So last time we did that, it had a peak viewership of about 80,000 people. And wow, I think it total reach of like probably like around a million, um, which is pretty cool. That's great. Um, so that's stuff that is like- Is that just yours or is that is that kind of like standard for like all of those e-sport e events? So that's specific to that event. Um, and it's not, it's not necessarily my event. It's actually run by a good friend of mine who came up uh, going to my events as well. I've had a lot of people, it's, it's weird. So, um, my industry has a lot of parallels to jujitsu, uh, which I, I've, I thought is like really cool. So the main game I focus on is, um, is smash brothers, uh, which is yeah. for, for the uninitiated is a, is a fighting game feature Alex, the, for the old guy <laughs> in the room, yeah. for the grandpa. First, first, how old are you? I am 33. 33. I okay. Yeah. Right. I don't, I lose, yeah. tra I've had kids. I've just lost track. I got, I got yeah. boots. How old are you? I got boots older 36. than that. I'll be 36, 36 okay. in December. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I'm so uh, yeah. So the game we focus on is Super Smash Brothers, which is a a fighting game featuring Nintendo characters. Um, and there's two main ones that are played. There's Super Smash Brothers Melee, which was on the Nintendo GameCube, came out in 2001, and still played competitively to this day. Wow! Uh, in in a big fashion. I mean, like we're talking like events with like 1,500 people. Wow! Um, are some of the biggest events. And then there's a game called Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, which is the most recent one uh, for the Nintendo Switch. And so those are the two primary games that are played. And um, it's played in two styles, two versus two or one versus one. One versus one is the main one. And there's there's a, a ton of parallels to jujitsu. It's really fascinating. So yeah. like the most fundamental one is it's a, I think the like, the right term is like it's a zero sum game. There's one winner, there's one loser every time. Same thing with jujitsu, right? There's one winner and there's one loser. Only one person com can come out on top. Yep. Um, and you know, it's, it's about like the way that the game is played is like, there's, you know, there are items and a lot of fun stuff to add, like, cause it's a party game. The way Nintendo designed it was supposed to be that you would get together with your friends and just have fun. Yeah. And then people being how they are, they took it real competitive like Mario Kart and all that. All yeah. The, all the yeah. fun stuff. And, the kid. You, and you they might relate with that. Nah. They get Atari. Like, uh, you remember Atari? Atari was awesome. <laughs> Shut up. Atari was cool. <laughs> so they get like, <laughs> so they get like real, like uh real, deep into it. So the game is played like, you know, it's no items and it's all about like your skill with your specific character and your ability to press buttons. Right. Okay. Um, but the fundamentals of like winning and losing and learning from your losses are extremely similar to jujitsu. And the way that the community is structured is very similar to jujitsu as well. There's not a lot of money in the game. Like even the top, like if you're at the top, 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 the tip, top, tippity top, like the Gordon Ryan of Smash Brothers yeah. is making like five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's okay. really good. Everyone else, the next guy down, if he's lucky, he's making like a hundred. Okay, you know, but that's, that's not still bad. Good. That's good yeah, money. Right? But um, but most of the times, like if you go, you do tournament. The tournaments have a couple hundred dollars in prize money, maybe. Um, a lot of guys are just there. The majority of guys are there because they just care about it because they're passionate because they're fun. They want to compete. They want to get better. Um, they want to test themselves and then they just want to spend time with their friends. And yeah. there's like so much of that in jujitsu because there's not a lot of money in jujitsu for the athletes yet, which I know yeah. is something that Gordon Ryan is really pushing for. And I think is, is a big opportunity for improvement in the sport is bringing more money to the athletes. Yep. Um, it seems like there's money for some, for organ organizers at the top level. So the people who are organizing the really big tournaments, they can make some, they can make a living doing that. Oh yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of money like in, in the sport in general yet. So people who are showing up and paying to go to a tournament and competing, they're doing it because they want to test themselves and, and they're doing it for glory. Yep. And that's how the, the smash community is to a lot of those guys. Like they're just there to see how good they are. And they're, they're just there for the glory. Are there sponsorships? Yeah. For for guys, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's teams, and those uh, there's a couple of really big esports teams that sponsor Smash players, and esports in general is like is a wide ranging industry, and and a lot of people make the mistake when they think about esports, they kind of think of it as like one thing. Yeah. So they think about like the League of Legends World Finals, which is like the biggest event every year. It's in a stadium. It, it gets more viewership than the NBA Finals. Like wow. it's a big fucking deal, right? No kidding. Yeah, and that's what everybody thinks. So like, oh, that's what esports is, but it's not that. It's esports is is any game you can play competitively is an esport, and uh, and okay. it's all about what that community does to grow that to grow that sport. And sometimes like. You know, there's the developers, the guys who make the game. They're mm -hmm. they're behind it. They put in money. That's what the guys who do League of Legends do. They put millions and millions of dollars into it. And then there's like the Smash community. And Nintendo does not give a shit. They're like they hate the competitive community. Actually, like they really? they don't want the game to be played competitively. And they yeah. like like they have some <coughs> competitive representation for it. Um, they've gotten better about it, but they they don't like the game being played competitively. So why it's is all that? on the why, why is it? Because are they just trying to build this like family type style instead of like a com competitive type? Yeah, style? Yeah, that's a big part of it. I, they just so in Japan, playing for money is illegal. 
Um, it's like they're the really strict gambling laws, so you can't play for money there. And so they have this, like you have a Japanese company and their, their gotcha. game is being used like by people to make, to, you have the organizers making money off of running the game. You have people making money off the content from the game and you have people making money playing the game. Nintendo's not getting any of that. Uh, right. Yeah. So like yeah, yeah. I, and to a certain extent, it's understandable. Yeah. If they were smart, um, they would. You, they would get a lot better about supporting it and yeah. recognize that it's like any game that is going to be competitive if the developers support it, like yeah. it's going to be bigger. So, um, yeah, so it's like that's that's a, I think a big part of it is they just they they want it, it to be family 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 friendly and they just are a slow moving traditional Japanese company. Okay, yeah, so. I, I mean that kind of happens a lot with a, a lot of that kind of stuff from you know, from Japan, right? Yes, they get stuck in the the tradition. Exactly. Um, let me ask you a question on the uh, like the popularity of esports because I I remember, uh, geez, must have been either high school or college. Like like those like gaming boutique, like I don't know how would you call it, venues. I don't know. It used to be a thing where you could go to like a place and they would have like you know the Xbox se- section, PlayStation yep. section, and you can go play whatever ever game you want, and it, it'd be like you know. <laughs> Monster energy drink, you know, vending machines everywhere yeah. and like balls. kids. Yeah. Anyone remember balls energy drink? <laughs> B-A-W-L-S. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like there, there yeah. used to be these like kind of places where you could go and play video games with a bunch of other like, you know, people who play video games. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like a lot, like there used to be one by Bass Pro. There used to be one by yeah, Papa Val yeah. Vista. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they've all gone under. But from what I can tell, esports has gone up in popularity. So like, I, what, what's your thought on that? Like, how does, how does that even is it just more people are just like figuring out how to do it from their their own home? Is that just accessibility it? is a big part of it? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. a gaming, a decent gaming computer nowadays is like within reach for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the games are, um, a lot of the competitive games like are not you're not going to like a land center to play them. Right. Um, so so the, a lot of those places are gone. There's actually the only one that I know that's like mm-hmm. really successful is um, is um, one of our partners, Pure Esports in Gilbert. <laughs> That place is banging. The guy who runs that place, yeah. I actually, so I we actually used to have a venue that was dedicated just to our tournaments. Um, we like it was just for Smash tournaments. We would run tournaments there, like Wednesday through Saturday, pretty much, or Tuesday through Saturday. Um, and like that was all it was for. Where was this place at? It was at. Um, it was on Baseline in McClintock. Okay. There's a place called La Fonda Mexican Restaurant, mm-hmm. and there oh, used yeah. to be a senior taco place. there. Yeah. And there's an old school dive bar there called um, Baseline Pub. Baseline Pub. Yep. <laughs> it was right behind Baseline Pub. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about Baseline Pub real quick. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college, we used to go there, and you tr- you go there. They used to ha- they used to have uh, pool tables. I don't think they still. I don't think they do anymore because you know drunk people break that kind right. of shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you'd go and order a pizza and it was literally a frozen red baron pizza. No that way. Toss mm-hmm. in the oven in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right, whatever. I'm drunk. I'm drinking. Yeah, Bud Light. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had my first conversation with my wife at baseline pub. No, oh, shit. Really? Yeah, we were, we had, we were doing a show. We were, we were in a musical together and the whole cast went out to, to, to the pub and I sat and talked to her. I had a girlfriend at the time, actually. And I was talking to her, and I like we just had a really Ooh. cool, yeah. We had like a like an hour scandal, yeah, an hour and a half conversation. Kimmy, um, Kimmy, I want to hear your version of this conversation. We'll bring her on. <laughs> um, yeah. So we, yeah, that, that I had my first conversation with her there. So it was nice, crazy. Man. But yeah, we had, um, so we had this this spot, and uh, and it was a dump, bro. It was a dive. It was just like yeah. it was dirty. It, man, owning a, I, I sympathize for everything you go through as an academy owner because one landlords suck they are keeping terrible. the place clean sucks yeah how the like, showers coming ah oh, shut up <laughs> <laughs> it's um yeah so like so we so we actually had a spot and uh and i mean it worked well for us because it was really specific but all the other land centers around are are gone like yeah. you said because it's it's a hard business to sustain my my friend dan i was amazed that he did it because i was like i don't think land centers work like people just i was like people don't want to go pay to play games but that's yeah. not true it's, it's probably a hard uh, <clears throat> business model to like structure appropriately cuz it's cuz you're cuz you're really like aiming for like 15 and 16 year old kids who like mm-hmm. Most of them are like living off their allowance or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But you know what? There's there's that bar. What is it called? It's like right down the street now. It's End like game. End game. Yeah. We, we that took, was where I got my start. That's yeah, right. My, with my company. That's so. right. Uh, we took Zach there uh, for his 21st birthday, mm-hmm. my, my son Zach, and we played video games like you could play any video game you want. Yep. Like mm-hmm. all you got, or a board game, whatever the hell you want. Yeah. But they have these different little sections. You're almost like. <clears throat> but they're like, making their money off alcohol. They're not yes. making their money off. No, no, off I get it. Yeah, I right. get it. But it wasn't like, you know break the bank expensive mm-hmm. you know we there was six of us and seven of us and we 
had food and had drinks. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I think right and, now is the heyday because millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Us. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Because we grew up playing arcade games and that kind of shit. Right. And now we're all like, God, I just want to drink after work <laughs> yeah. and play video games. Play video. Dude, I'm telling you, this place like has like, it's not like you're sitting there in a chair. Like there's couches. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we. There's like Cobra the f- Bar downtown. There's, yeah. There's the a, food was there's good. There's a bunch of yeah. those things. They're all yeah. over the place. I yeah. thought it was a good, I thought the concept is good. Is good. Yeah. Um, I wasn't impressed with how many people were there. It you just know, wasn't very busy. It just wasn't very busy. Maybe it was just a night. I can't remember what night it was. But it was I Tuesday mean, night. But like, nah, was it Tuesday night? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, so that that place has been around for a long time. So that's actually a perfect segue to how I got the, how I started the company. Yeah. Um, was... See, segways. So the guy... Uh, so Spell the guy who runs in his name's, his name's Ryan, and he was... When he opened Endgame, this was all the way back in 26... Is, is Endgame the one that's in Gilbert? Downtown Gilbert? No, that's uh, it's up the street from here. It's at Alma School and uh, Southern. Southern, yeah. yeah, it's like not too far from here. <clears throat> okay, um, there is one in Gilbert, in downtown Gilbert, called Level Level, level One, up? Level or, Up. Yeah, I think it's Level Up. It's like kind of like in that back behind uh, Barrio Queen yep. or whatever. Yep. Yeah, in that, but it's and that's more there. of like a traditional, I think, like like bar bar, mm-hmm. but yeah. it has a video game element to it. Whereas yeah. Endgame is really like. It's. I think the video games and the and the the bar portion are really kind of on par with each. Is other. Is that the one that's right by the Bank of America building? Yes. Oh, yep, okay. I think. I, yeah. Okay. I've never been there. It's pretty yeah. cool. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So they originally were on Mill Avenue, and they were um, on the second floor uh, on Mill Avenue in the, in the Brickyard building. Um, mm-hmm. So that's like where the ASU Engineering building is. Yep. And when Ryan opened it, I think there was two other video game bars in the country at the time. I mean, it was a thing that people were really starting to do. Because like you said, when millennials reach a certain age, people start, you know, they're starting businesses and they're like, what do I want to do? Well, I want to play video games. And like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 25. I want to drink and I want to play video games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Let's like combine them together. Right. So when they opened, they did these things called beta tests where they would have uh, smash tournaments to just get people in the door and kind of see how it worked. Um, I ended up getting a job there as a bartender and I would see them do these beta tests and they got like a lot of, they got like 300 people. Okay. I was like, damn, this is huge. Like, this is crazy. And so after they opened, um, I had I had mentioned to him, I'm like, why don't you, why don't you guys do this all the time? Like you should do this every week or at least once a month. Yeah. You're yeah. getting a lot of people. And he was like, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I'm too busy. So I ended up getting laid off of there because they open and they just didn't have the business. Yeah. That, that, that location was, despite being on mill, they had a lot of issues because ASU did not want a bar in the building, but did not want the space to be empty. So yeah. oh, they got, put them in there and they charged them $12,000 a month in rent. Holy yeah, shit. And good. then they would do shit like when there was a block party, they would turn off the escalators and block them off so people couldn't go upstairs. Oh, no. And they didn't do that. I don't think they did that to fuck Endgame over specifically. It was just they didn't want drunk people on the escalators. That's like right above Q Club, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's right in that area. So, so I never they, went to ASU. They had a, <laughs> um, they had a difficult time in early on and so they laid me off um but i stayed friends with ryan and i had mentioned him like you know uh why are you guys not doing these tournaments and he's like oh i'm super busy so he was like he's like why don't you give it a shot man like maybe you should do it and i was like at the time i had i had started the company and the company was originally called sak ventures and it was me and my two best friends addison and kenneth and uh, it started with Kenneth and I sitting in a Barnes and Noble um, talking one day and he was like, we should start a company. He's a business major. He's like, I want to go through the process. I want to see what it's like to get an LLC uh, and do all that stuff. And I was like, okay. And we're like, what should we do? I was like, let's do a podcast. So we had a podcast and it's actually still on iTunes day. It's dog shit awful. It's, <laughs> it's, I think it's pretty funny, but bro, the audio quality, you want to talk about technology. The audio is terrible. We had yeah. one microphone. It was a USB audio Technica AT 2020. Did you have it between you and you just like, literally it would be, <laughs> we, we, if this, it would be here yeah. and, and we would be talking just and it would yell at it. It would be peaking like crazy. Every time yeah. we laughed, it was so bad, yeah. but we did 36 or 37 episodes. We okay. did a lot, man. That's like, not we, bad. Yeah. And back then, man, it was even More harder. Huh? More than you? More than me. He's got me beat. <laughs> Back then, it was even harder to put a to put a podcast up because you had. What to year do, was this ish? This was two thousand and fourteen. About. And okay. when did you stop? Yeah. We stopped in. We stopped when we started the gaming portion of the company, and that was a that was. Let's see, that was May of twenty sixteen. Okay. So I think we probably started in really like more twenty fifteen. Yeah. Uh, and then we kind of fell off it once the gaming portion started because yeah. that really picked up steam. So we had a podcast. It was called Sack Up. S-A-K and Sack Up, right? Um, which I still love as a name. And uh, and it's out there. You can listen to it if you want to. Um, 37 we, episodes. Yeah, we've friend. kept it out there. And uh, um, 
You should just have that run at your gym, like on the in the background. <laughs> just shitty sack peaking up. audio. <laughs> uh, what are you guys doing? Sack up, baby. We're listening so, to sack up. Oh, we had a crazy intro, and it ends up, and it's like sack up, nerds. It's like, oh, don't, bro, it was so crazy, but it was fun, man. God, it you was, guys are edgy, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, so that was our first thing we did. And then this opportunity came along, and I looked at it, and I was like, well, I was in college at the time. Um, I was, you know, I had been laid off. So I, I was kind of in between jobs. I was actually working at a place called Dixon golf, um, which I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I think they actually have their offices near here now. They You're were retired. Tempe. You play golf. Nah, I don't yeah, play golf. <laughs> and they, uh, and I did, um, I did, I was, I did search engine stuff for them. So I would look up tournaments for them to go and sell sponsorships to. Okay. Um, and so I wasn't doing much. I was going to school and I was like, I, I can give this a shot. And I was like, I mean, they got 200 people for that tournament that, doesn't seem hard if you charge like five dollars a person, you make like fifteen hundred, like like a thousand dollars. That's not yeah. that bad. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So um, I I went out and uh, I was I'm proud of myself because I actually did like a lot of market research. I went, I met people who played the game. I talked to them about what they needed in the in the community, how we could make it, like what we could provide, how can we make it better. And then we did our first event. We signed a three month deal with Endgame um, to do or to do. F- four tournaments so we did we did it was actually a four month deal because we did three tournaments one a month and then we did like a championship and there was like a point system it was overly complicated but um our first event i was like all right we're gonna you know like we'll make like a thousand dollars be great we put up a hundred and we did a hundred fifty dollar pop bonus and then we also had to pay people five dollars a pop to bring their systems because we didn't have any systems at the time right yeah um so we ended up on our first event we got 37 people so we like Barely broke even. Yeah, it was yeah. like I think we made yeah. five bucks, and I was like, ah, shit. But then we had this, we had this deal, and I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing it. And it, and it was kind of the same thing. Like I know you know this now, and and like and as an academy owner, you probably know this feeling too, because there's a lot of I'm not an academy owner. I never mind. You're not an academy. Yeah. Owner, so yeah. You don't know anything. No, I'm <laughs> I'm the mooch. I thought, yeah. I thought you I thought you, owned, you were an academy owner. No, no. I, I oh, teach okay. at Paul's. I don't I, I don't own Paul's. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies for assuming. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But like, as as an like you know like as an entrepreneur like you like you said, it's not like you're being pulled. You're just you're just falling. You're, you're going. Falling. You're just yeah. doing it. You yep. can't stop. Right. And uh, and that was what I started doing, man. I just got deeper and deeper into it, and I met everyone in the community, and I just fell in love with all the people there. And in the same way as jujitsu, like I just met these people. And the thing is, like they were also like younger than me, and so I was kind of like a a father figure to a lot of them, you know, because yeah. I was twenty. Um, five. Yeah, I was twenty five. A lot of these guys were like high school, college students. That yep. were so you're the out. old guy. I was. Yep. Yeah, I was the one who <laughs> was just feeling. responsible enough <laughs> yeah. to be able to handle right. money. Literally, and, they know it's like twenty five year old. You're like, I'm still a child. Yeah. Shit. yeah. <laughs> well, that was the weird thing was being thrust into owning a business at that age. Yeah. I mean, I just didn't expect like everything to take off the way that it did. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we just kept playing it. By the by, the end of the contract, we had um. We, were, we would run two two events per month. We would do Melee and we do Ultimate. Melee, we would get about 50 people. Ultimate, we would get about 90 by the okay. end of it. Was that kind of like the, if you build it, they will come kind of thing? Yeah, and that's always what I tell people when they ask about starting, like, running tournaments and stuff. It is just, like, if you build it, they will come. Like, yeah. if you, you, you just run it and you keep running it and you let people know it's happening and they just, people just show Consistency up. Consistency also, Consistency, I would assume. Consistency, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like anything else, man. If you're good, you'll stand out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, the reason I asked you, like, uh, the, on, the, on your podcast, why you st- when you stopped is, um, you know, when I was looking at podcasts, there's over 2 million podcasts out there. Yeah. I mean, there's 2 million podcasts. So you think it, it, it may seem overwhelming. And this goes back to people just thinking about doing a podcast. Is my story good enough? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. If you're good, you'll stand out. So uh, the other part of it is, yes, there are 2 million podcasts out there, but 50% of those podcasts quit at 25 episodes. Right? Yep. So about to cross that threshold, really, baby. Yeah, really you're not you're, last you're, episode of BJJ Fox cast. Yeah. <laughs> this is it, folks. Uh, we're all done. But um but then if you if you look at how many of those podcasts that are active are consistent, very few. Mm. So if you look at your pool of competition, it's probably less than a hundred thousand. It really is. Yep. I mean, really, the, the pool of competition is really low. And, man, like I said, if, you, if you're good, you'll stand out and just be consistent. Just yeah, keep yeah. showing up, and you're going to be fine. Um, one thing that I'm doing now is I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, what would, okay, what guest could I request that would make people think that I'm fucking crazy? Right? So I'm reaching yeah. out to like celebrities that do jujitsu. Joe Rogan. Oh gosh, I'll fucking reach out to him. I don't One care. One day, man. <laughs> what, 
what can I say? No. Like, I yeah. get that all the time. I'm married, for crying out loud. <laughs> 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 Sorry, babe. But, uh, but really, I mean, like, Ed O'Neill. I reached out to Ed O'Neill almost like our third episode. I reached, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it again. Uh, Richard Bressler, who I love his book. Um, they actually responded. So I'm like, awesome. You know, those things, man, I'm, I'm just going overboard. But when I nail that one guest or two guests or three guests that are going to, you know, put us at the, at the top of that hundred thousand, it's all worth it. Right. Yeah. It's all worth it. And the worst, I don't even know these guys. They don't Steve, know I me. Told him to, I, I told him he should ask Jocko. Yeah, Jocko you would should. be a good one. That would be a, that would, be would huge. that would be a great episode. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a really cool. I mean, episode. you could totally be like, "Hey, I'm ex military jiu jitsu guy." <laughs> I'm sure he gets several hundreds of those. But I drink I'm, a I'm not black afraid. rifle coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, he has his own shit. Like, yeah, no, no. They, I, they're putting a black rifle coffee in right next to my house. Are they really the stores? Like a I, store? Right? Yes, I just saw it today, and I got so excited. <laughs> Where's this at? <laughs> it's at Crossroads. Uh, you don't need to tell us your address. Uh, it's yeah. Power and Ray. Okay. okay. Power and Ray, yeah. yeah and uh, and fun. that's, yeah, like, that's like five minutes from my house, and I am so stoked. I'm yeah. really excited. It's I good love, coffee. I love Black Rifle, man. Yeah, I it's love good it. coffee. Um, it's, it's, I mean, listen, it's not just good coffee. It's phenomenal <laughs> coffee. Hey, it you is might know. And, so good. And this is, yeah. you want to talk about controversy. Um, do they have an instant coffee? I think they do. I think they do have one now, okay. yeah. maybe. Because I hate fucking making coffee when I'm camping. Like, Oh, yeah. I but God, that Via shit from Starbucks. Oh whatever, yeah, it's like, crap. So bad. It's crap. I had yeah. it this morning, and I was like, "Oh my God, good thing I'm fucking cold, and I just want hot liquid." But if Starbucks yep. wants to sponsor the show, please, I will drink all the Via <laughs> oh, coffee. You shouldn't sponsor him I, because he. Sucks. If Black Rifle Coffee wants to sponsor the show, <laughs> That'd be awesome, yeah. Reach out. Yeah, that would be cool. Get code, you know, ten percent off when you use the code BJJ. <laughs> right. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, I, I, I. So I, um. Black Rifle is actually one of the ways I got into jujitsu too. So that's something, okay. that's something we'll hit eventually. But yeah. like, um, yeah, I, I, their coffee is the, and I was, I was, I'm not so much anymore. I, I, I became a coffee snob for a while. I got real into it. Yeah. Um, and like I had like a whole brew set up and stuff. Now I just do, I'm, I'm just too lazy to order more filters because I have like a pour over <laughs> system. So I just yeah. do, um, I do, uh, uh, press like, a yeah, yeah. French, French press, French press. Yeah. yeah. Just like every morning. But, um, but I like their coffee. I tried a whole bunch of different ones, and there's just something special about their coffee. Yeah. The way they do it is it is excellent. It's excellent. excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of coffee you drink? Uh, Whatever's free. Whatever. Yeah, I drink. I drink cheap coffee. I don't. I, I drink it black, so I don't give a fuck. I'm like, I'm, I'm in it for the caffeine. <laughs> um, and I just, but I, like. <clears throat> Some I, I know that some I like I haven't like I drink a lot of coffee so I like I know like some coffee is shit but I'll still drink it yeah and you're just like that Zia shit is shit yeah <laughs> like yeah. and I've drank I've had it before and I've bad. drank like uh, Classico you know the, it comes in like the brown glass jar from fr- fries or yes. whatever that's, that's good stuff <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not usually picky mm. about coffee but like if I can like especially like cause instant is like really good like especially for like. Like, you know, I we talked about how I like, I do a lot of hunting, right? It's yeah. like, there's nothing more fucking convenient than boiling eight ounces of water, pouring it, yep. and tossing in a, a just a powder pack, right? Perfect. Yeah. I don't have time to fucking brew coffee in the morning when uh. I'm, because I'm like, I'm staying in my fucking sleeping bag until the very last second. Yeah. Yep. Right. I, I actually have the French press on my uh, jet boil. Yeah. No, I had one of those. I've, I, I've had two of those. I broke both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, I. Because I'm like, let's go. I need to go. <laughs> you know, fucking pumping that thing as hard as I can. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't work. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Can you take me hunting sometime? Yeah. Yeah. Someday. We can do that. Yeah. I, I really, Rifle, really you, you, want to go uh, hunting. Firearm or archery or what do you want? Firearm. You want to do uh, big game or small game? Small game to start. Fuck yeah. I love small game hunting. <laughs> small, I was, I was, uh, last weekend we were out bear hunting. Um, Holy shit. Really? And, and did not see any bear. Just so don't get excited. But. My favorite part about like failing at big game hunting is like almost always, well, I got the 22 in the truck. Let's go rabbit hunting, yep. yeah. squirrel hunting. Yep. It's always rabbit and squirrel season like that. And I love it. It's so much fun. Um, yeah. I, I've wanted to try hunting for a really long time because I, I hear a lot about like being closer to your food mm-hmm. and yeah. how, and the value in that. And then also just that like freshly killed Meat is just so much better. Well, not rabbit. Well, not uh, rabbit. also, no. like, get this. Like, rabbit so, sucks here. Um, <clears throat> the entire year of 2022, I did not pay for any meat. Yeah. Like, my yeah. freezer has had game meat in it the entire yeah. year. Like, that's huge. That's, it's, it's cool. I, I, you know, I like that a lot. You know, that, I mean, cause I'm cheap. 
So, <laughs> and I say that, but if you like, you come out, if you like, you probably balance out the like, all right, so there's bows, there's arrows, there's ammo, there's all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, probably yeah. is way more expensive. Yeah. And plus the gas getting out to places. But either way, it's like, I haven't had to buy like, you know, a steak from like fries or whatever. Yeah. And, I think, I think Cam oh, Haynes yeah. was like, uh, he said it. It's like, yeah, it doesn't pencil out. It doesn't pencil out. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's like a, so I like, like reload ammunition too. It's yeah. like, Reloading, yeah. If you want, you can do it cheap, but it's crap. Yeah, right. It's just like anything else. It's yeah. like you get what you put into it. So it's like, yeah. If you're reloading your ammo for like consistency and accuracy, it's like you're spending a lot more money you're than you would if you're buying box ammo, that yeah. kind of thing. But uh, small game hunting is so much fun. It's it's easier, I should yeah. say. It's yeah. not easy, but it's like a lot easier than like big game hunting. Uh, a lot more opportunity, but it it's a lot of fun and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me know when I want to try it. By the end of this podcast, you'll we'll be we'll be close enough. That we'll be like, yeah, we'll go. Out. I, no, I just I'll take try anybody. It. Small game hunting, big yeah. game hunting. That's a commitment. Like yeah, big game hunting yeah. is a commitment, and it's like there's a lot you need to do before you even get into. Like people are like, I have people who are like, hey, can you take me deer hunting or javelina hunting or whatever? And I'm like. Uh, what kind of cold weather gear do you have? Yeah, how yeah. I don't I, I don't think people are prepared for like how shitty that is. You know what you should do, man? When somebody asks you to take you take them hunting, big game hunting, just say, "Okay, well, uh you're going to come scouting with me." Mm-hmm. And then take yeah. them take them through a summer of your scouting. Yeah. That is awful. Yeah. Like it no, that's no. Yeah. I, I bet they'll change their mind. Well, but- I told you I, I went bear hunting last week and and this morning, right? That's what I was doing this morning. It was like people don't realize it's like for every like video you've seen on YouTube of a guy killing an elk or a deer or a bear or whatever, there is a thousand hours of that person <laughs> fucking doing nothing but walking around with their bow or yeah. the rifle in the desert or the yeah. forest. It's like it is so much extra work that no one ever sees. And yeah. they're just like, Oh, that looks cool until they like get into it and you're like, Oh, there's a lot of stuff that like it's just it's not rom that that part's not romanticized as right. much as yeah. like like, oh, here's the kill. Here's Taking like, the shot yeah. and all that. Yeah. But that's but that's what <clears throat> makes it like that's what makes the experience though, right? Because 100%. like all of that 100%. Time just just yeah. grinding it out and suffering to get to get to that moment, that one moment where you take that one shot, like yeah. that's what makes it, right? hundred percent. It's like yeah. well, like I said, like squirrel hunting is fun. Yeah. It's fun. And and squirrel doesn't taste bad. It like tastes like chicken. It's like kind of like tough chicken, but you can like, you know, roast it and then it's fine. But it's like not a lot of work. So you're not like, you're not really like, hey, look, I killed three squirrels this weekend by posting on Instagram yeah. versus yeah. like the guy who kills like, you know, the buck of a lifetime. He's posting that everywhere. Right. Yeah. right. There's a lot because because before that buck was put down, he was spending time in the backcountry. He was hiking like many, 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 many miles on his feet. Like it's it's a lot of work that goes into it. So yeah. and, and it's in the summer. It's in it's in the off season. Mm-hmm. So it sucks. Yeah. And and there's people that'll hike out several miles and then bury water mm-hmm. so they can really? go the next time and go even farther. Yep. You know what I mean? That's so awesome. it's, I like it, to suffer, man. So I yeah. just like, and I didn't used to be this way. Yeah. Right. But I did find, I have found that I have found that I do really in, enjoy experiences that I have to, that, that make me have to suffer. Yeah. It's type two yeah. fun. You like, you yeah. learn that like mm. all the best experiences require suffering before you get to there. Yeah. yeah. Like anything that's like cheap fun is, it's cheap, but it doesn't last. Right? It doesn't. But like yeah. the stuff that you had to suffer for, and then you accomplish it, is like well, like you're talking about jujitsu, right? It's like anything that you've had to work for, and then you finally get that gold medal. You're like, you'll remember that. Yeah. Versus like if it's something that's easy, you're just like, oh, my goal is just to compete. It's like that's an easy goal to accomplish, right? Yeah. You yeah. just got to make weight. It's it's like a um, comparing a roller coaster ride to a deep sea fishing trip where a storm hit and you almost fucking died. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's scary, but that's like you'll think about that for the rest of your life. Not not the scary part. You'll yeah. think about the people you were with and yeah. what you went through, and you know who was throwing up. And it's well, it'll, it, actually fun. It tempers you. I think yeah. those experiences temper you, and I think that that's something that a lot of people lack these days is temper tempering. Yeah. Like they don't go through really hard experiences. That's one of the, the thing the reasons I think that anxiety in our society is so sky high mm-hmm. is. Um, is people don't go through hard shit. They don't struggle. Yeah. Like we have built, and especially in America, and listen, it's not this way for everybody, man. Like many <laughs> people are struggling out there. Yeah. Like they're going through real, really hard shit. But, the, you know, I think a lot of Americans, generally speaking, like, you know, 
you know, let's let's take like the three of us in the room. We're not worried about where our next meal is going to come from. Right. We, like everything is like I know his his grill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's on right now. It's on right now. Man. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think that people, a lot of times they like they're not having to truly struggle to accomplish things like we built a society where it's just like everything is just very easy like you yeah. know you have government provided schools even government well i wouldn't say government provided housing this is one of those things i might i might say something too controversial because i get because <laughs> listen i also know that for for tens of millions of americans it's not easy like, right it is, yeah. it is hard but you know what those are the people who ultimately are successful yeah for sure like a lot of the guys who are really successful um like in business in media are guys who didn't come from anything. Right. You know, because they had to, they, they know what it's like to be hungry. They yeah. know what it's like to be scared. Yeah. And I think that having those experiences is really, really important. Like that's something that I really want to make sure my kids understand is like, I don't want to torture them, Yeah. but I want them to do hard shit. I want them because I didn't do hard shit growing up. I okay. was very blessed. I had a very easy life. You know, I mean, there's, I like, I had my bumps and bruises and, and family things that happened along the way, but fundamentally I was never worried about where my next meal was going to come from. I yeah. always had a roof over my head. I always was able to go to school and not worry about anything else. I mean, I yeah. worked, I started working when I was 15 and a half and I'm glad that my mom instilled that in me. Yeah. But fundamentally, like I did not have to struggle, not really. And through jujitsu and through doing hard shit that it, I have found that to be, that to be true, that it alleviates anxiety. You also started a business. Better. There's a lot of value I did, to I did that. I did do yeah. that, yeah. Like, I, I think that kind of gets brushed aside as, like, a hard <clears throat> thing, but it's like, you've got to kind of put yourself out there for that. I mean, not necessarily, like, in a physical aspect, but, like, you're putting, like, your well-being out there, like, yeah. money and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, Yeah, my be my best friend is my partner, and is also my partner still, Um, is, you know, he mentioned that to me the other day. He was like, he was like, dude, you have to remember, like, you have done something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Like, you... He's like, you are the most self-made man that I know. He's like, you you did literally had nothing, and we started this business, and you've kept it going for seven years. And like, what's the percentage of, of businesses that just f that fail in the first year? It's nine eighty five. It's like most businesses yeah. most don't make them. it a year. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just so it's and it's weird because I I don't give myself credit on that front very much because I'm part of being an entrepreneur is I'm extremely hard on myself. Yeah. I, was, I like, thought he was going to be like, uh, I'm very humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of uh, living a blessed life is I'm so humble about it. <laughs> so bad for me. No, I just, yeah, I just, I'm very self-critical and I'm very like, you know, like I always, for the longest time, and, I, and oddly enough, even though like, you know, my business is like at a weird level right now where we're trying to figure out where we're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was scared for years yeah. for, I mean, it wasn't until it probably wasn't until about like 2019. So about four years until I realized this is not just going to disappear. Yeah. Like it is established enough. There are assets enough that if something goes wrong, like we can make it like we'll yep. be okay. Right. But I, I was deeply afraid for many years. Yeah. 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 I'm just okay. being like, I, and like, and especially because, um, and maybe, and I don't know if this is the same for you as like an Academy owner, but when it comes to building your business around a community, there's the fear that you will do something wrong or people will work against you mm. to drive you out of business. Mm. And I held that fear for a very long time that I would do something wrong or I would, I would say the wrong thing or I would just mess up in some way and the whole thing would just fall apart. Yeah. Especially in, in this time of day, this, this day and age where, um, you know, it's like anything you do, someone's looking to cancel you, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that that could be that's a genuine fear. But I think we're getting to a point where so many people have been canceled for the wrong reasons. Yeah. That there is some redemption, right? There is a way back. And um, you know, if you were if you would ask me the same question five years ago, I'd be like, no, you're screwed. You say yeah. the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing. Anybody says the wrong thing about you, uh, people want to believe it. You know, they pe that people want to believe, it. especially if you're doing really well, like your business doing really well. There's not there's no better story than you know, making it and people tearing you down. Yep. Everybody wants to hear that story, right? But I think today, people are kind of raising an eyebrow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, they're like, yeah, well, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, yes. right? The difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is six months now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's six months. So, um, so I think we're in a better spot than we were. And I think it's just going to continue to move in that direction because it was so bad for so long. Yeah. And, it got uh, real bad there for a while. Yeah. So, I mean, but what I love about what you said is, like, you were scared. And you know what, man? Anxiety is a good thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Anxiety gets your ass out of bed. Anxiety is what gets you to write your thoughts down and, and, and try to make shit happen, right? Yep. How do I grow this thing? How do I move forward? How do I expand what I'm doing already? Instead of just sitting there going, you know, I hope I'm just keep doing what I'm doing. I hope it works out. No, that's not good enough, right? Yep. What got you here will not get you there, period. 
right? That's just so, something that's to talk about your school though. Like, yeah. so I noticed like, on the uh, the most recent um, like the points things is like your kids program is is number one, number one in the yeah. state. Like, like I think the saturation of jiu-jitsu in, or saturation of a lot of whatever the, the the market is, right? The saturation. A lot of people are like, oh, the, it's, you know, I can't open this business because the the market's saturated. It nope. was like. Yeah, are you trying to be mediocre though? Is that right. is that why? Right. Because like, if your aim is to be the best, that saturation is actually good for you because it means a lot of people have a lot of exposure and they like they can see like, oh, they they suck because of this. Yeah. That school's awesome because of this. Yeah. I'm gonna go to them. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. The saturation is really good. Like, because then then the people know what they're getting and what they're missing from from certain schools. And I think, um, like for your guys' school, you guys are are successful because you're aiming to be. Yeah. You know, great. Yeah. You're not aiming to be mediocre. Yeah. Or, or, and, and it's got nothing to do with uh, tournaments. Because, like, I think the problem, like, with, like, a lack of saturation in whatever market it is, is, like, say, like, you're the you're the like, the one guy on the block doing whatever, jujitsu mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, you know, running uh, uh, esports or whatever it is. Um, people don't know, so they're just like, okay, I'm just going to open a business and I'm going to be mediocre. And then right. someone else yeah. comes in and th th those are the guys that complain about saturation is because they weren't, tr they were given it 10%. Yeah. And now there's this guy given a hundred percent and like, why is this guy doing so good? Oh, the yeah. market's saturated. Yeah. It's like, mm. yeah, that's something that I've, that I've struggled with with my business too, is because we were like, we were early to the game, you yeah. know? And, and like, and like we were the only company of our kind in Arizona for a really long time. And now there are a couple of other, of other companies that have come in. And not only that, like the people, like the people who work for those companies, like I'm having experiences now where like the people who work for those companies used to work for me yeah, yeah. and now they're working against me in a virulent fashion. Yeah. Like, I mean, just like, like they're like, but the, but you know, I think the thing that, that helps is, um, they have they they have a famine mentality, yes. Peace mentality. Yes, they want to take me down because I've been doing this for so long. Because the like, zero sum that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, just, they they. I mean, honestly, like everyone can can't. There's enough people in five million people in Phoenix. Almost yeah. six. Yeah. yeah, there's room for everybody. Yes, exactly. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's just you gotta you gotta build the right product. Yeah. yeah, you have to put in the work. But that's something. And so it's it's been interesting for me because that anxiety in a way has come back because I've been really thinking about like do I want to keep running tournaments? Now I've been mm. doing this for seven years and mm. like the tournament stuff was profitable enough for me at 25. Mm. It's not profitable enough at 32. I yeah. or 33. I have, I've got two kids. I got a wife. I got, got a house. A mortgage. Yeah. You know, I got, and so I'm really, I've been really thinking about like, what do I have to do to take this try to the next level? I do. <laughs> I'm not retired. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up. The funny, the funny part about being a business owner too, is like, I, I reached a certain point in my life where um, cause I, you know, I, I worked from the time I was 15 and a half. I worked, I started at a, a shitty juice bar in Chandler and I started working at GameStop. I worked at GameStop for six years. Mm -hmm. I was a manager. I did the whole thing. I was in the, you know, like I was part of the corporation. Um, and then I quit that and took a couple months off, uh, and then eventually started working in the restaurant industry. Yeah. So I've done the shit jobs. Yeah. Yep. Right. And Everyone should have to work restaurants. Dude, yes. give a fuck. Yes. Okay. I learned or so retail. much about people. Retail's a close second. Yeah. Yeah. Restaurants are definitely some restaurants about, some, Something yeah. about giving people food. Just, yeah. Yeah. The restaurant industry is horrendous. <laughs> it is so <laughs> terrible. I mean, I mean like, what other industry is like, oh, minimum wage is... Ten dollars an hour? Yeah, that's cute. We're gonna pay you three. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna make we're gonna expect you to work like twelve hour shifts. Yeah, and uh, no days off. And if even if you're sick, you still have to come in, which is yeah. not good. You're basically but as a server, you're basically a contractor. You are. Yeah, yeah, you're a yeah. contractor because you're not yeah. really paid by your company. Three dollars no. a fucking hour. They're paying for taxes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, it's bullshit, man. I hate I hate the restaurant industry. I love the people who work in it. I have yeah. a lot of respect for them. Me too. I hate the restaurant yeah. industry. I, I will never it do terribly. it again. I actually I was telling Kelsey the other day we went to. A crackers and company and uh, i was like i literally had a dream last night that i was still working here and it was like a fucking nightmare yeah. <laughs> i used to have those nightmares yeah. being yeah. back like in same yeah. story as you like you were talking about like you, starting at 15 and a half my mom worked at crackers and company when i was honestly it was like and she was like uh it started off as like the big holidays she would make me and my brother come down and be like bus boys mm -hmm. no kidding yeah wow yep yeah. so we were working I, I don't even think we were 15 and a half i think we were oh, less man. than that she would it was the weekends and she'd be like you're working. Yeah. <laughs> Get in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that was it, that for me as like being an entrepreneur at a young age is I, I, I hit this point having worked for other people that once I started to see success with being a business owner, cause I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily one of those people where I was like, you know, 
I, I was and I wasn't like I was I was working I was willing to do the work but I always had this feeling of like I bucked authority I didn't want to be a, yeah. like I, I originally um I wanted to be a like a performer I wanted to I wanted to sing okay and um I, that's what I studied in college and I was like I just don't want to work a desk job it's yeah. just are not are you gonna get get a little something uh, <laughs> let's, we, we gotta get some drinks in them yeah I don't know about that we'll <laughs> no, that'll, ruin, long, that'll ruin the vocal cords time. were you not that's listening yeah, did you not pay attention <laughs> we'll mix it with a little yeah. water <laughs> so I uh it's been so long since I've done it, but uh, maybe maybe I'll give you guys a, a taste. At some point. <laughs> That's how we're gonna end it. That's yep. how we're gonna end it. So, um, oh, say can you see? <laughs> so I al- always had that feeling of like I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want to be a. Cor- I don't want to work in an office. You know. Yeah. But what I found was that I wasn't making a lot of money for my business, but I had so much time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could just do. You know, like I could just do whatever I wanted a lot of the time. Yeah. And that's good and that's bad. Like that's really dangerous because you have to develop discipline to be able yeah. to get things done. But I realized that like and I and I always said this through the struggles and every time where I was like I was like, you know, just wondering, you know, kind of wondering like when are we gonna pay the bills? I was like, I'm not rich in in I don't have a lot of material wealth, but I'm rich in time. Yeah. You know, I've gotten that's huge, man. His time huge. is money. Really huge. Say. I've yeah. gotten to spend so much time with my boys. Yeah. Like so much time with, with my kids. How old are your kids? Uh, I have a three and a half year old and a, and a six month old. They're okay. seven month old now. Yeah. yeah I'm so very young, particular young. about the months. They still love you. <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like More I, important, they know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I got, I, I'm, I feel really blessed in that man. Like I, but it was like, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't always that way too. Like I definitely struggled with being a father, but like, like, uh, and making that, that adjustment. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've being rich in time, to me, I just realized, I, for some reason, I realized that early on. I'd always rather be rich in time yeah. than rich in money. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Money will come, man. Yeah. It will come. Yeah. You see a lot of people who, like, stretch themselves so thin for their fucking jobs. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, ugh. There's a, there's a, I can't remember exactly how the saying goes, but it was like, uh, you're killing yourself for a job that would, would replace you in a week after yeah. you die. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, why? You're making someone else rich. You said yeah. that to me. Yeah. 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 Making someone else rich all the time. Yeah. So, um, when I first started my day job, when I got out of the Navy a long time ago, um, we had this big town hall and our, uh, he wasn't the CEO of the company, but he was like a, you know, a a C-level guy for our department, our division. And um, he literally sat there and he bragged about his life. And he said that, um, you know, I kiss my kids um, good morning while they're sleeping. And then I kiss them good night while they're sleeping. Because he starts his day, like, stupid early, and he gets home stupid late. I'm like, oh, no, what did I do? Yeah. I hope I don't ever become that guy. Yeah. And so yeah. that was a great lesson for me because everybody's, like, cheering him on. Like, oh, that's fantastic. Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. <laughs> like, that is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. I mean, hey, no, hey total respect for people who want to live that life. I'm not that guy. That's how my mom is. Really? She brings her, I, like, I'll go visit her every once in a while, and she has her laptop open. She's working. Yeah. That, that bitch is working at four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Like she brings it home with her. She works every waking hour. But you know what? Yeah. Uh, there is something to be said if you're really passionate about what you're doing. She's if you not, love. Okay. So she, that's she's, different. She's just like, she's got the work ethic beyond yeah. like anybody. Then yeah. that, that's the thing. Like, like I said, like that's, when I was a kid, yeah. she was like, you're coming to work. Yeah. Like, you know, that was like, that's just, that's just how she is. Like, yeah. I, I, I think she defines herself by work, which is like, maybe she's passionate about it. I don't know. I, yeah. You'd have to ask her. Is she Mexican? You because that's how we, Japanese. How, okay. Okay. Yeah. But very, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very similar work yeah. ethic. You can have her on the podcast. Yeah. I'd love to. That would be I would so love funny. to. Yeah, wow. I wouldn't have you again, but uh, I'd have her on the podcast. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny. The funny thing is, is like, uh, our, our relationship has like gotten, uh, better since like, uh, like when we lived with each other. Like, yeah, it's just of like, course. that's like yeah. kind of how that works. Right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, in, in my culture, like, well, growing up, like one of the best things you could what be called a uh, Mexican, Babies? very, <laughs> very, uh, a, a hard worker. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm a hard, worker. you know what I mean? Yeah. And you kind of, a lot of, uh, my family is defined by their, by their work, you know? And it took me a long time to realize that's not as important as you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Life's short, man. You yeah. get, you get one shot. Yeah. And I mean, like, like I'm a third of the way through, yeah. like it's, and it's weird to think, but like, if I'm lucky with technology, I maybe I'll live to a hundred, comf- like comfortably, yeah. right? Where I'm not like just like a vegetable. Who comfortably lives to a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. No one now, but <laughs> well, some people do. I mean, yeah. you hear stories. You know what's weird is you hear story- these stories about these people who are 104, and they're like, "How did you do it?" And they're like, "I smoke cigarettes it's every day, bacon. and I walk a lot. <laughs> yeah. I ate bacon, smoked cigarettes, and I walked." Yeah, yeah. dude. Like it's, but it's, so like I think I think about um, there's a there's a good 
um, idea in stoicism, which is something I've gotten into a lot in the last few years. Um, and it's the idea is like, think about death every day. Mm. Right? Like, every day, think about the fact that like, this is it, this is your shot. So spend every day like it's your last. Yeah. And, and that's a hard thing to do. Cause I think when you think, when you think about that, that's kind of like a cliche saying is like live every day, like it's your last. And you think that people are just skydiving every day and, <laughs> and throwing responsibility out the yeah. window. But it's, it's about like, just recognizing that and not yeah. getting too wrapped up, man. Like I, like I, I try not to get too wrapped up in my work and I really try to be there with my kids because, mm. cause I realized, um, I realized at a certain, like at a certain point, like I just, I have, I mean, I'm, I know what it was like my best friend. Um, this was about 10 years ago, actually it killed himself. Mm. And ever since that happened, man, I just have for, for the longest time I had a fear of death. And then, in the last like two years, and I think a big part of it has been doing jujitsu for whatever yeah. reason, yeah. like had, that has alleviated that a lot for me. But I, I do realize, like I, I think about death all the time. First time, at first I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This is horrifying to think about. And now it's like, am I living in a way that if I died tomorrow, I would have it, I would have no regrets. Yeah. And I am. I yeah. have no, like if I died tomorrow, you know, heaven forbid, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't regret it. That's like, great, and, man. And so that's, but I think a lot of people are not living that way. A lot yeah. of people yeah. are, are living in this, in, um, they're living lives of quiet desperation. I think yeah. Henry David Thoreau said that. Yeah. If I'm not yeah. mistaken. He said men live, li many men live lives of quiet desperation where they just, you know, they get up, they go to work, they're stuck in traffic all day. They just chew on it. Yeah, that's it. They, and that's yeah. it, man. You know, yeah. and I just, and I don't, and I, yeah, I just, I, I can't live that way. That's, that's like core to my ethos. I just can't do that. Yeah. You know? a, a very similar thing happened to me. Uh, gosh, God, how long ago was it? Maybe five years ago. My friend, Mark Stoltman, I freaking love that guy. One of the smartest men I've ever met. Smartest men. He, um, he went to chiropractor school. Uh, when he was married and had a kid, which is very difficult because it's not an easy school to graduate from. Oh, I Gra thought meant getting married. No, no, graduated, <laughs> and then um, I started a practice, and he decided he hated it. Went back to school, became a toxicologist, worked in a lab, and he thought, I could make a lot more money just, you know, uh, being a professional witness fighting against lab results. Yeah. And that's what he did. And, man, he was a great guy, you know, a uh, super athlete, uh, died of a massive heart attack at 44. Yeah. So my relationship with time changed at that moment because, you know, I saw what it did to his family, beautiful family. I mean, he had everything, everything. I mean, uh, everything you could ever want, he had. You know, uh, 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 his wife adored him. His kids adored him. He had a great house, great life. Um, and then he just died yep. one night. He just died in his sleep. And um, it's kind of unfair to other people what I did, but when my relationship with time changed, I didn't have a lot of people on board with it, right? I didn't explain to people, hey, I'm a dick when you call me because I don't have time for your call, Yeah, yeah. right? It was a bunch of bullshit. It was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And I would go to a meeting, like a like a work meeting, and I would just sit there and I would stew. Like, oh, my this. fucking God, don't even get me started. But just imagine, yeah. you know, you you come to that realization, like, I'm going to die one day. I'm, I'm like, yeah. my friends are dying. Like, I'm at that age. And then these guys are pulling you into a freaking two-hour meeting that should take 30 seconds writing a fucking email. Yeah. Yep. You know? And, um, and like I said, it's unfair to them because they're still in that world where everything's great and no one's dying. And I'm in this world like, Hey, every second counts. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't know how you would communicate that to people. Like how, what would you say? Like, Hey, this is bullshit. I'm not going to, I, I literally would just not show know, up. Cause like so the, the reality is, is like some people do care about the minutiae. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. And they don't, there's they're, nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I would argue there is something wrong with that. Well, right? no, there, there's, no, there, there isn't. However, if you if you um, get to the gist of your meeting within thirty seconds, that meeting's over. I don't, I don't necessarily mean like work related stuff. It's yeah, yeah, like yeah. When yeah. someone's shooting the shit, and it's like, and it's something like you don't care about. Yeah, yeah but you know that there's a difference though, because if you and I, I don't care about a lot of things that you say. <laughs> <laughs> but you and I have become close because we spend those times together, right? Sitting in the backyard, you know, having argue, some drinks. It's because we care about the same things. No, 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 no. I really don't me. give a shit about <laughs> what you think. But but no, we became close because of those conversations. Totally different, man. Yeah, so like, yeah. there's things that I don't give a shit about. There's really things that I don't give a shit about that I get dragged into that I'm like, dude, yeah. no. I don't care about, like, the random girl that's on my team who went on a hike this weekend. You know, I'm like, <laughs> can we just, if we're going to have this stupid fucking meeting where we're all fucking sucked into this hour, yeah. it's like, can we just get to the business side of it? And then, oh, I guess we have 20 extra minutes. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think the big thing is just like 
just being like, like uh, so I went through a phase where, um, where I was kind of that way, where I was like, I didn't want to waste any time. Mm. I, I like, you know, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to have a meeting with you. I don't need to have a meeting with you kind of yeah. thing. Um, I think it's just about like structuring your life in such a way that like, you just don't put yourself in those situations, which yeah. is really hard to do if you are working for a company a where yes. meetings are mandatory and all that shit. But like in your everyday life, like you just have to, you just have to be like, okay, so like this person wants to have a meeting with me. Am I going to, am I going to get anything from this yeah. in, in so much as like, is there an opportunity here? Um, will I grow from this experience? Like, will this, will, one of the biggest things that I've, that I've thought about and learned is like, I asked myself, do, it, does this thing serve me? Mm. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that has ranged from like addictions I've had to like, um, to like, you know, even just like things that I had as hobbies or work that I did. Yeah. Um, I asked myself like, is this serving me? And if it's not, then it's got to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But you just have to let other people, I think, live that way. And and part of what happened for you, I'm sure, was like you had that realization. You started looking around and being like, man, I don't want to be in a two hour fucking meeting. Yeah. yeah. And when you when you realize that for yourself, how you orientate your life changes and you started orientating towards being an entrepreneur, being yeah. a business owner. Yeah. And now here you are. Yeah. And, um, you know. I, I do appreciate a lot of the things that I learned from corporate America. I really do. Yeah. Um, one thing that I learned was uh, to put a little pressure on myself to get things done. Yeah. Right. So you talked about being disciplined and, you know, how you have a whole lot of time and that can be dangerous. So, you know, what I used to do is like uh, I was in sales, so I'd have to like, you know, make sales calls and then have meetings and then, you know, uh, write proposals, stuff like that. <clears throat> and I asked myself, like, how long does it actually take to write a proposal? Like, to when you've got it down, like, you've got the, the concept down, and you're going to put it on paper, about an hour. Mm. Really. And you can spend all day writing an hour proposal. You can. Because you, you just fuck around, you take breaks, yeah. you, you know, whatever. YouTube. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but when, when you really dial it in, you're like, okay, I'm going to make an hour of phone calls, and then I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take an hour to write this proposal. Then I'm going to take a break. And then I'm going to take an hour to write, you know, call this customer and get more information so I can write the next proposal. So all of those things I'm taking into now. Now I just wake up in the morning, I'm having my coffee and I give myself an hour to look at, you know, our, you know, whatever information came in, any, you know, uh, replies that I have to send out, you know, with our system, um, anything issues with, with, uh, with, uh, students, any issues with coaches, stuff like that. I give myself an hour increments and then, Oh shit, I got to go teach a class. Boom. Head out there. So you can, really learn a lot from being in a corporate job mm -hmm. but if you fucking hate it you got to do something different you can't go to your deathbed wondering what if you can't yeah. uh, man you can't, can't. no my, my dad always says you either learn to love your situation or you change it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that's what you, like that is definitely like what you have to do yeah and i'm grateful for everything i got from that job i mean yeah. it, it helped me raise my kids i bought a house i had cars that you know vacations it was fantastic but it just wasn't who i am yeah. It's not who I am. So, I mean, yeah. back, back to what you're talking about, like a, your, how you used to have a mindset of like pure utility, right? Like it was, if it doesn't like suit, like serve you, it, yeah, if it doesn't serve you, it's like, it's useless. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's one of those things that I, I mean, you're probably getting to the, that age too, because probably around 30, 31 ish when I started realizing it's like cut out like the garbage, but like, that doesn't mean like the things that don't have utility. Cause there's like, there's people in your life that like do things that like, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested, but the people are important to you. So you'll like, you'll, you'll care about the things that are important to them, even though they're not important to you. Yes. They yeah. don't have any utility to you, but those people are important to you and you want to keep them in your life. But there's people that don't have any importance to you <laughs> and then also don't have any utility to you. Yeah. Those people, those are the ones you cut out. They yes. don't bring right? anything to right? the table. Because yeah. I, I found that like when you're like in your 20s, you're kind of like trying to conglomerate a bunch of different groups of people in a bunch of different groups of interests um and you find that like you're, you're 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 trying too much to like get everything yeah right and then when you get like for me when i hit like around 30 31 i was like a lot of that is fluff yeah right so yeah. you find the people that are like i don't necessarily care what they are doing but i care about them being in my life mm -hmm. so therefore i'm going to put an effort into like caring what they're doing so it's like not pure utility necessarily but they're people that you care about, right? So it's like kind of like the family that you you choose versus the family you're born in, yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Well, it's I mean I think that's the basis of relationships is right. is 
you engage with someone on a subject you may not care as much about because you care about that person. Right. Mm. And that like any one you. of our friends that don't do jujitsu. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or you're like, can yeah. you please shut yeah. up about jujitsu? Or you just, I think like, I think being married, like yeah. Yeah. being, or even being in any kind of romantic relationship, there are things that your partner is interested in that you could give two shits about, yeah. you know, but you're like, I like this person. I love this person. I want to be with this person. And this is important to them. Yeah. And so I think that there's a lot of value in that. But I do think that like, you're like, I think you're hitting on a few things, which is like it, like one is on a professional level, engaging with people that are not going to serve you. Yeah. Right. Like I've definitely sent emails to people to like reach. So like there was a good story of, um, it's too close. It's too close to the jujitsu world. So I won't say, say the company, but I reached out <laughs> to a company about doing esports with them. And, um, the guy was just a dick. The guy ran, it was just a dick. And I was like, Seth. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Seth's not a dick. He's a good dude. Seth who? Seth. <laughs> so he so he was um, you know, like I just I just didn't I just I did not like like my interactions with him. And so like he actually like I sent him an email back and then he reached back to me and then I was like, I'm just gonna let this go. Like yeah. I just yeah. realized and I've gotten good at realizing that like this is not a person that is going to add value to me or my company. And so I'm just not going to pursue this. Yeah. Another good example was like, um, odd, oddly same company, but years ago before the, before they went, they were upscale, they reached out to me and they wanted to have a meeting about esports. And this was when I was kind of in that phase of mm. like, I'm cutting shit out. I don't need this. I don't need that. I had just read the four hour work week, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, like yeah, Tim yeah, yeah. so I was like, <laughs> I, I was love like, Tim I and, love him yeah. too. Man. Yeah. It's, it's four hour diet so. or four, four yeah. hour chef, four hour chef. And then yeah. we did four hour chef and four hour body. Yeah. Or yeah. four hour body. That's yeah. the one I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. That's a good, I, that book. Has Great a book. Lot of stuff in yeah. It. So they had reached out and they were like, yeah, we're, we're building this thing and we would love to talk to you about esports. And I was like, um, okay, so when's your location opening? Well, we haven't broken ground yet. Mm. Uh, so it's going to be a while. Um, do you have anything to really work with? Well, no, we're just kind of interested in exploring. I was like, listen, man, I I'm really busy. I can't do this. I'm sorry. Like, you know, and, uh, and I don't re really, re I don't necessarily regret that. So I think there's like the professional aspect of saying like, um, you know, some people, like you said, they, uh, there's no utility and there's no relationship there. So it's like, we don't need to do that. But I think the other part of that is, um, have you ever heard the maxim you're, you are the average of the five people you hang out with most. Yep. Sure. Yep. yep. I think that shit is a hundred percent true. It really it is, is yep. really true. And so yeah. as you get, especially as you get older, you start becoming more discerning with about who you're spending your time with because yeah. you realize that your time is really valuable, not just because you're busy with your kids and your, and your, and your, uh, your family and your house or whatever, but because like there's only so much of it left and it's just ticking away. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like, uh, I think that, I think that's a character test too, like a kind of litmus test. Like uh, you see that in jujitsu, right? Like you see a lot, a lot of people who will like only roll with people that are worse than them. Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, I want to be honestly, like I want to be the, I want to be the low man on the, on the ladder, yeah. you know? Cause then you have something to build up to. Yeah. Like, if you're the, if you're always the high guy, it's like, well then where's the growth? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. just about, at that point, it's about your ego. Yeah. You mm -hmm. like feeling good when you submit a dude mm -hmm. who is, you know, in a second week or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't, so my experience kind of like as white belt being very, very new to this whole thing. Um, I think I've had, uh, eight submissions in 13 yes. months. Yes. Um, and two of them were in the last, but who's last counting, week. but who's yeah. counting, whatever. <laughs> but the thing is, is let like, me show you my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing for me is like, when I get them, it's not like, uh, like it is a feeling of like, of, of accomplishment, but like, like I don't want to roll against people that I can beat. Yeah. That's why I go to the 6am classes. Yeah. Like I've talked to you about that before. Like, um, like I liked, like I, I love the 6am's because, um, it's very intense. Yeah. Everyone there is a higher belt. Uh, and the, and I, and I, I was telling Amy this the other day, like if you show up to a 6am jujitsu class, you're there to work. You're there to you're work. You're not there. Yeah. You're not there to have like to hang out and chill. Like you, you have chosen to come here at six. Talk about for utility of time. The guys that yeah. show up to a six a.m. class, it's like I got to go to work. Yeah, yep. we're, oh, here, and, we're no, here to train hard for this hour. I got to yeah. haul ass home. I got to shower. Yes. Yeah. and then I got to yes. get, get my ass to work. Yeah, yeah. So. Those guys aren't. They're not <laughs> fucking around, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. and and I and I value that a lot because, um, I I want to go in there and be challenged, and uh, and I have found that um. When I go to other classes and I roll against other white belts, it's a lot. It it feels easy mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, it's different. Um, yeah, and which Wait till I, you go, start going to other schools. Yeah, really? yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you go to other yeah. schools. I mean, don't get me don't get it twisted. You'll go to some schools and you're like, man, these motherfuckers strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. then you go to some schools yeah. and you're like, Jesus Christ, what? The, yeah, do, are they? Do they even care? Like, well, I yeah. went I went to a school in uh, in Idaho Falls, and I'm thinking Idaho Falls. 
Should be easy. Dude, no. That's how it was when we went to, <laughs> when, when we went to West Monroe. Yeah. Like, man, those motherfuckers train hard. My boys at Vibe Jiu-Jitsu in mm. Idaho Falls. Yeah. Bro, I rolled with a I rolled with a wrestler first round, but he mm-hmm. was a white belt wrestler. Yeah, but you know he's he's a handful. He's a wrestler. Yeah, and then the second guy I rolled with, I was not ready for this kid. He was all over me. Yeah. Took my back. You know, I was like, I had to fight. You know, just to get out of there. It was like it was a lot of patience on my yeah. part. And then I rolled with three black belts in a row. Yeah. In, in a row, and dude, they could party, man. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was it was a lot. It's of fun. so cool because like uh, one day you'll get there too. It's like. You'll go to like these like small hole in the wall gyms, and it's like those are probably where they train the hardest. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like because like in West Monroe, it's like we were there for a week, and we trained there. I think we trained there three or four days, and it's like, man, every single one of those guys were there for one purpose. Yeah, and that was to get better. And yeah, they all put. I didn't roll with anybody who like gave me lazy rolls. Like you go to like, uh, I'm not gonna name names, but you go to a, an open mat here in in the valley. Some schools. Yeah, everyone's there is, is there to kill you. But then you go to some gyms and everyone's there like, oh, we're just casually having an open mat. We're just going to like, mm. it's nice and slow paced. And yeah. it's like, no, everyone there in those small towns, it's like they have one purpose. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that like it's, I've never had an easy role in any of the classes that I've been in. Not where or a lazy role. Yeah. But I, I, I am just, I'm very surprised when sometimes when I'll roll with someone and it just feels easy because yeah. I'm so I'm used to it. Not like I never, I think I've, I've submitted like one time in the 6am, you know, like yeah. maybe, maybe, <laughs> right. Like I get crushed and that's how I started my, my jujitsu career was. Yeah. And I remember talking to you about it. Like I did the warrior program and stuff and you know, I got, I got to it, but I, I, it was hard for me to make the 1 PMs like interrupt my day and have to like, uh, like come down to the gym. But I remember telling you, I was like, I want more intensity. Yeah. Like, I want to get my ass beat because that's why, like, that's why I'm here. I'm here to, like, be humbled and and to learn. And yeah. you don't learn when you win. There's right. so many people who can't see that. Yeah. And it's it's so sad where it's like, I my I love rolling with Josh because I'm bigger than Josh. And he beats the shit out of he, me. He makes me feel like I'm on day one. Yeah. I can't. Every time I roll with him, I you know what? I'll be, like, turtled. And he's, like, ready to fucking rip my head off. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder if. He feels this way with everyone else. Because <laughs> I'm, yeah. you know, as a black belt, you're like, I feel like I should be able to like defend myself better. Yeah, yeah. But you're like, I feel like when I watch him roll, sometimes I'm just like with uh, with other people. I'm like, I feel like I'm probably not as giving him as much as that guy did. <laughs> and yeah. it, you know, obviously, like, and you know, like when you when once you get to a certain level, you like you'll kind of throttle yourself depending on who you're rolling with yeah, so yeah. it's like you can't really gauge yourself a basis of like what you observed him like right. rolling with that white belt right. versus that blue belt or that brown belt or whatever it is right but it's just like you gotta put yourself in those bad positions if you don't you're never gonna get better those yeah. guys you just like and i'm not gonna name names but we know we know people who are like i only roll with people who are worse than me yeah. and like they, because they, they know they'll win yeah and it's like if you go in a whole night without getting submitted or ha- out having like without being challenged, it's you're like, rolling with or, or with life in general, right? Like if you go your whole life without being challenged, it's like how the hell do you expect to grow? Yeah, yeah. What's well, like rolling with Andrew? Andrew is like a monster. Purple belt Andrew. Yeah. He's oh a yeah. Monster. Yeah, and and he's a nice. He'll be like. He's a sweetheart. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> he's such a super quiet, but yeah. he's a monster. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's. One of those things, I was so happy when he got his purple belt. Yeah. Because, like, now I can feel a little bit better about myself. I mean, because, not great. But. Yeah, it's not great. But, <laughs> but yeah, but, but yeah, um, he's great. one of those rounds that, like, you better or be Keola. ready. Keola. Yeah, Keola. I mean, you better be ready. Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. the way it is. Or, I mean, uh, not Keone. <clears throat> Keone is what Yeah, I meant. Keone's tough, man. Yeah. Keone's, and he's getting better and better and better. I was like, every time I roll with that kid, I swear to God, he's better. And and the other day, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, was there Serena? Uh, uh, I'm brain farting right now. Uh, Serena, <laughs> Serena was there, and and I was like, every time I roll with you, you're better. Sierra? No, no, no. Brown oh, belt. Serena, brown Serena. belt. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's come by and check. Yeah, I know you, you sat on in your office chair the whole time. Um, <laughs> I was working. <laughs> I was working. But I was like, I every time I roll with you, which is like basically like once every six months, I'll see it or an open mat or whatever. Yeah. But she yeah. showed up, um, which was awesome. I love her. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. But um, I was just like, you are so fucking solid and tight. Like Myers. it's just like. Serena Myers, that's her. Yeah. 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 Every time I roll with her, it's like you get better every single time I roll with you. And, yeah. And it's just awesome. It's- yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the biggest compliments I, I get is when, um, like, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten so far was from Joel. And 
and all it was was um we you know we went 15 minutes oh my gosh <laughs> yeah i don't know why it was like after it was after a fundamentals class okay and i was like let's yeah i was, I was like hey man you want to get get some in and they set a 15 minute timer and then we just went for 15 minutes <laughs> and he would submit me and we'd go again. he'd submit me and we'd go again yeah and at the end of it he goes he goes dude he's like you're getting better Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I had, he's like, I had to turn it on. Yeah. He's like, I had to really push you. And, oh, good. And, and so he's like, keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, that is a massive compliment yeah. for someone like Joel, dude. Like, yeah. So like uh, uh, when I, that's the other reason Ooh. that I love working with those, <laughs> those, um, <laughs> those higher belts is that like, if they, if, so, if, uh, if a, you know, if a brown, if a, if a brown, if a, a blue belt, even like Joel tells you you're getting better, that means something. Yeah, means absolutely. a lot yeah. to me. So yeah. And he's legit, man. He's he's a tough dude. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's always like wherever you're at, right? Because, like, like you were saying earlier, you're you're a white belt, right? Yeah. So like that blue belt person is definitely like you know they've got more experience to you, and yeah. they, they tell you like that, you know, they're damn. I had to actually turn it on. Yeah, it's like that is that's fucking cool. Because I remember being a white belt too. Like, um, Brandon Walker once he's like, uh, he wanted to roll with me once when I was a like maybe two stripe or he's like, I want to roll with you. Cause I, I know you're, you're Del Hiva. You like really understand Del Hiva. Oh, and I was like, that's nice. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in, in your, in your head, you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm the man. Like, I have no idea what you just said, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, he's like, you know, it's just those like little compliments, like just seem to go a long way. And yeah. I, I, I like to t like, you know, every once in a while you'll like, uh, and you know, this as a coach too, like you'll, you'll roll with like one of your students and you'll, I mean, obviously you'll, you'll beat them. Right. And and they'll, they'll be like, I'm like, dude, you're getting better. Yeah. Like, I had to try. And yeah. it's like, I, I try to, I, I try to realize like whenever I think that kind of stuff, I try to make sure that I vocalize it to my students yeah. because I know how much it meant to me when I was a white belt or a blue yeah. belt or a purple belt, like rolling with your coach, like rolling with Paul. It's like, you know, you have those days when you roll with your coach and you're like, I think I, I think he had to try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you know, know, one of the things that um, one of the goals I set early on was I mean I might have been like a blue belt or a purple belt. It it wasn't that I wanted to get a black belt. Is yeah. I wanted to promote a black belt. Yeah. That's been my goal. Like That's I want really to promote cool. a black belt. So every time like the the classes lined up, I'm like, who's it going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, because people come and go, and it doesn't matter what the belt color is. I've seen purple belts disappear. Yeah, you know. So I'm always like, who's going to stick around long enough to be my first? you know, white to black belt that yeah. I actually get to promote because you can't promote black belts until you got two stripes on your black belt. On your, you have, on, your, on your Or black on your belt. own black belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. You got to have okay. two stripes and yeah. that takes six years. And he's basically, he's got his first. He's, yeah, I should, he, yeah, September was, whenever, my whenever the, the thing happens. It's Nava. Yeah. It's Nava. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no. I'm, in, I'm in no hurry, but really like I'm always looking at up and down the line, like who's it going to be? Who's going to be my first white to black belt that I get to promote? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's going to be a great day for me. But it's really cool. Like, um, like, so like since I've taken over the six AMs, we've had a couple of like brand new kids. We have these, these two kids that are Marines. Mm. And I, and when I say kids, I mean, they're like 28, 21, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. No, no, they're like okay. young. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Young One of kids. them actually works at Healy's. Okay. You know, the, the gun shop uh, yeah. off of uh, Tempe right by the baseline pub. Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> All the way back. But they're like, they're great kids. I just gave them their first stripe on their white belt. And yeah. it's just like, it's cool. And like, one of them's a wrestler. Okay. And that kid, like, like we talk, we've talked about this before. And like, I've talked to him. I was like, show me that, that, that single leg setup that you yeah. have. You know, like, he's yeah. like, he's a really good wrestler. Yeah. Like, stand up for me. I'm like, I'm pulling guard. Yep. But, like, if I can get someone who's, like, really good at, like, a certain te technique. He's a really good wrestler. So, I'm like, here, show me how you do that. Show me how you, you know, you know, enter that sing single leg. Show me how you set up that that ankle pick or whatever. He's that kid. Yeah. He's a white belt. Right? Cause, yeah. But he went to high school. He, like, wrestled all through high school. And now he's a, now he's in the Marines. And he started jiu-jitsu. Um, and his, his buddy's uh, not, not a wrestler. But he's also, like, you know, still getting better. And Tough dude. It's really cool yeah. to like see these like young kids get in there and they're like, and I'll roll with the 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 one that's not a wrestler, the one that's a wrestler. He's like used to getting beat up because he's a wrestler, right? Yeah. Wrestlers are like, they're a different breed. I don't know yeah. if you've yeah. you met many wrestlers. Like they're used to getting their ass kicked. Right. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. like they're just like, like I said, they're a different breed. But like yeah. the other one, he was like, you you can see sometimes he feels discouraged. I'm like, trust me, dude, you're getting better. Yeah. You're like, I should beat your ass every time. That's that's uh, surprising to me that a wrestler would be discouraged. 
No, 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 not the wrestler. The wrestler was his the buddy. Okay. No, the wrestler was like all about it. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> the funny story. So like the other day, we were, it was like the end of class. We were all like, you know, changing out and everyone's like leaving this. So the 6 a.m. class. And he was like, he's, he's like, uh, how, how fast can you run a 5K? I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> all day? It'll take me all day? Yeah. yeah. I mean, how long is a 5K? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how much time you got? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I bet I could beat you in a 5K. <laughs> I was like, yeah. probably. Yeah. I'm like, are, motherfucker, yeah. you're 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking well better, right? Yeah, if you don't. Yeah, yeah and you're a Marine, right? Yeah. You guys... It's like basically all your guys' PT is running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was just like really funny. He was like, I, I, it's like, I need to find something I can beat you at. And I was like, I was like, that's kind of a cool thing. It's like, yeah, I'm trying. He's like, you know, that's like a goal in his mind is just to be better, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah it's like good. find the people in his life that are better at, at him and like, you know, kind of like reach that plateau and then he'll find someone else and yeah. then like whatever, whatever it is, right? And it's just like, I, I think I just, I, I appreciated the mentality of like, you know, Picking the high guy on the po- on the totem pole, right? Which in in jujitsu, like in the morning class, that's me, yeah. right? Like I'm the guy at the top there, yeah. and he's like, "Let me find something I can beat you at." And I was like, "I, I thought it was like cute and funny, <laughs> at, but it was also like it's a cool mentality." That is a good mentality, man. You should carry that into everything, right? Yeah, and and I, I kind of <clears throat> that's what I was like. I bet he is like that with everything. Yeah, probably is. Yeah, probably is. You know, one thing that I was thinking about, and um, it hit me the other day, is um. You know, when people talk about like, um, you know, getting better at things or or when when someone says I didn't I never realized how strong I was until this happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mentally strong. And I think, man, that's such a sad way to live your life. Yeah. You know, you have to have a tragedy happen before you realize how strong you are instead of being like, you know, doing something really difficult every single day. Put your <sighs> putting yourself out there every single day to realize how strong you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. You know, when, when, um, like I use, uh, I use Zandra as a, as an example, uh, a lot because, um, you know, she had cancer and, you know, unfortunately she didn't, she didn't beat it, but I always knew she was going to fight like crazy Yeah. because she was always putting herself in that from a very young age, Yeah. you know? And when you're doing things like jujitsu and you put yourself out there and you're doing hard things every single day and you know, when we're like in our daily lives, we are training for jujitsu, right? Because you know, if you do something stupid the night before, you're going to wake up and have to go train and you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. Yeah. Right. So you're always pushing yourself. You're always well, that was try- like the thing. I think you said this <clears> when, <throat> um, Jaleesa was on where it's like, I can't drink tonight because I'm training tomorrow yeah. or I can't, train tomorrow because I'm drinking tonight. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. When you switch that in your head, <laughs> you got to switch. When you make that switch, you're going to get really good. Yeah. And right I'm just right. like, all right. Oh, we lost him. Oh. We lost one. Potty break. Potty break. Unbelievable. <laughs> Micro bladder. That's okay. But we'll yeah, jerk each other off. You know, I, was um. thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about that. Like, it's really important to never say that. Never yeah. say, like, I didn't realize how strong I was until X happened. Mm-hmm. Right? Because everybody's got it in them. Yeah. Everybody's got it in them. You just have to, like, it's like a muscle you have to exercise, right? You know what's funny? is like, so, like, being, you know, basically featherweight, lightweight person, like, in the gym, especially at Paul's gym, like, I'm kind of, like, the smaller person. Mm. And I, I, I'm sure Steven can kind of relate to this, too. I mean, he's a little taller, but he's also, like, how, how much do you weigh, Steven? Uh, 135, 140. Oh, wow. Holy okay. shit. I'm super yeah. light, man. So, yeah, you're, yeah. like, you're, like, light feather. <clears throat> yeah. Feather. yeah. Light feather. Um, well, almost, I've always, I've always been, like, underweight, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but also, it's, like... No matter how much I eat, it just doesn't stay. Hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like you. you, you'll get like, it, it's like, it's like no matter how many times you like, like, I'm, I don't consider myself strong by any sen- mm. sense of the imagination, mm. right? But I'll get You're people not. who would tell me that, like, dude, that fucking pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, well, special, you know how to distribute that right. weight, and it's, yeah. and it's like one of those things. It's like you have to hear that so many times before you like realize you're like. Oh, I just know how to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, that's, that's why I try to make it a point when someone's doing something correct. Like, even if they like, like, oh, cause, cause the reality is, is like, sometimes you don't know when you're doing it correct. Yeah. You know, like you yeah. like say like pressure is a good example because like, you don't really like, if you can hold someone in side control, you don't realize that you're like putting that pressure down on somebody. Yeah. But then after they get up and they're like, man, I just fucking couldn't move. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Well, like uh, Nana. When, when, a, uh, Nana. That's your favorite example, that's right? Fa- Dude, like I would be so happy when she would get mount. Yeah. Because like, OK, she's not crushing my face anymore. Right. Because she could apply some pressure. She's little, yeah. little, little. Mm-hmm. Like she might be five foot. She might be 115 pounds. 
and she could apply pressure like nobody I've ever felt before. It was amazing. Yeah, it and, was amazing. and she doesn't wear geese that are her right size, <laughs> so you can't grip her geese. <laughs> <laughs> Nana's awesome. She does cheat. I had that experience um, a couple, like, it was probably like three weeks ago, I think, where uh, I was talking to, I think it's Brian. The He had just had the knee surgery. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I was talking to him. Right. Huh? Blue belt, Brian? White, uh, belt. white belt. Yeah. Is he white belt? Okay. Yeah, he just had he just had surgery. So we were talking after class one morning and um we were talking about you know, he was he was talking about how like he was like I have a lot of respect for people who show up and they like, you know, even if they're at a disadvantage, they keep, you know, they keep working out. And he's like he's like like you. You're you know, really like underweight dude. Like you're you're a light dude and <laughs> and you're in here rolling against guys who are like 6 inches taller than yeah. you and and 50 pounds heavier and he's like you just you don't stop. You just keep yeah. going. I was like, am I am I underweight? Am I light? I don't know. Like, I feel really good when I look in the mirror, but yeah. I was like, but I but that is true. Like I yeah. I definitely um I definitely will like like I probably am generally the lightest person in most mm -hmm. of the classes I'm in. Yeah. But what's weird is I'll roll with guys who haven't rolled with me before. And the, I've had this happen so many times. They're like, they're like, dude, you're strong. Yeah. Like right. you're really strong. I'm yeah. like, am I? It's because like, you just know how to apply the leverage or yeah. you're learning to apply the leverage. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a cool thing. Like you'll see that like it, it's, it's hard for like big people to grasp it. Yeah. Like, like Alex. Alex is a big fuck. He I likes steroids and shit. I'm not big. Um, but like as a as a small person, it's like when you can like learn to like impose your will, your big will, right, <laughs> onto somebody. That's not what I call him, but whatever. <laughs> Me your medium will. On <laughs> but I mean, like when you can like learn to like put pressure down on someone who's who can like literally bench press you. Yeah. And, like, and they try and they can't because you you learned how to cut the angle right where they yeah. can't have any leverage. It's like that's a cool thing. Like yeah. when you finally learn that, and it and it it's so hard to teach. Like I, I that's one of the things that I, I I really try to drive home, especially in positions like mount and side control, because that's really where you're trying to put pressure down, yeah. right? It's like it is very much being heavy is very much a skill mm -hmm. in jujitsu for yes. those positions in particular, yeah. right? Because like. It's easy for a 300 pound guy to be heavy in mount yeah. or side control. Throws his gut in your face. Or, or even if, <clears throat> if he's, because if, assumingly, if he's 300 pounds, he's probably at least a semi strong where he can just like grip the shit out of you, right? Yeah. And hold you. But when you have, like, Na like you were saying, Nana, a 120 pound girl holds you in a position and you're like trying your best to wiggle your way out of this and get like, you know, create wedges and like create space and you can't, yeah. you're like, Oh, there's more to this. It, it, there's technique to being heavy in side control. Yeah. Like yeah. obviously you can use like, you know, brute force, right? Of course. Any yeah. position you can use brute force. Yeah. But if you can figure out where to do that technically, yeah. It, it'll go so much farther. And that's why uh, in a lot of cases like all those like really small guys who are like, you know, um like we talked about like Isaac Doderlane, like you know, doing yeah. doing um a seminar, it's like those are like the kind of guys who you really want to learn from. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's a little guy and he is amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. So he's, he's coming to town too. Yeah. Thank God. <clears throat> That's something awesome that, guy. that I've, that I've struggled with a lot is like learning how to like learning that I can apply pressure. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I'm not, I'm not a heavy guy. And so I spent a lot of time on my back, like, mm -hmm. which I think is also just part of being a white belt is yeah. I spent a lot of time yeah. on the ground, a lot of time getting crushed. But recently I've started passing guards and trying to like apply pressure and i'm like s finding that i can yeah because like again i roll against guys who are like there's guys you know they're six inches taller than me they got my me by 50 pounds i'm like i don't see like mentally i'm like i don't see how i could put enough pressure on this person where yeah. they couldn't just pick me up you know and <laughs> and toss me right yeah. but i found that like i actually like i can like i yeah. actually can put pressure on people and that's yeah. been a, a different experience for me yeah yeah, I mean, figuring out like, you know, the, the thing that I like to teach people a lot, especially is like, um, like spider guard is a good example. It's like spider guard is all about like putting your legs against someone's arms. Yes. Right? Yep. Because like, I don't care how strong your arms are. Well, all right. There, there, obviously, there is a limit to this. But in general, like a weaker, a smaller guy's legs will either equate or uh, surpass a bigger guy's arms. Yep. Right. Because legs are just. Our, our, our bigger muscle group. You're right? limited yeah. only by your grip. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. In a lot of cases, you can you can figure out, like, a way to use a stronger muscle group versus someone who's trying to, like, so, like, like side control for me. Like, what Josh teaches is, like, that 
that version of side control where you're kind of like grabbing that lapel. Yeah. And all you're doing is grabbing the lapel and like kind of like leaning on the hip there. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to bench press you off and they're full extension, but you're just, all you're doing is just holding the squeeze. Yeah. And that's it. You're yep. not, you're not pulling. You're not doing any of that kind of stuff. You're just staying low, staying nice and low and just keeping the grip. Yep. And it's like, it, it's so much less energy than some guy trying to like bench you. Yeah. Like, Cause you're yeah. framed. I yeah. mean, it's your skeletal st- structure. He calls it. So yeah, yeah, it's really, really impressive. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, I don't think enough people at, well, at any school that has like a guy like Josh tr- uh, teaching at, like, yeah. I don't think enough people realize like how much of a, um, an asset he is to their <clears throat> jujitsu because like Josh, Josh is like 150 pounds, 160 pounds, maybe. Like, yeah. I mean, it depends. He probably walks around 160, 160, but yeah. like he competes at like 140. Yeah, he sometimes. cuts to 140. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like holy shit. But like yeah. a guy like that who knows how to beat you or someone who's like like you know 30 he doesn't, he doesn't beat me he doesn't beat me he destroys me yeah, yeah. it's a joke yeah. it's a joke he's he playing with you, his food you just lose yeah, yeah he it. plays with his food basically is what i tell him <laughs> like, quit bats with you around food. a little bit yeah. yeah um well listen man we've been going for about two hours now so we got 35 we got 45 more minutes, more minutes. <laughs> no um no <laughs> i just want hours yeah it's pretty close it's 651 yeah there's a clock we started at did we start uh, at 450? Right around 450, yeah. Yeah. Almost five o'clock. D- or did we not? I don't what, know. What is it? What does it say? I, that, I think we started at six o'clock. There's a timer on the roadcast. Oh, one hour and forty five minutes. Okay. Okay. That's not, not bad. Yeah, That's so shut bad. the fuck up. We got plenty of time. <laughs> we got plenty of time. I got I have to be at home and I need to put the kids down. But. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. But he's uh, got an right, let's keep hour going. and ten minutes. Let's keep going. Yeah. Look at Alex trying to cock block here. No, so I'm, I'm just get out. I'm yeah. trying to be respectful. We're having a good time. conversation. Should you shut the fuck up? <laughs> Steven, let's talk. I'll just fucking leave. Motherfuckers. Oh my god. But what's that like? Uh I, I mean, for, I, I don't know. You, so you mostly do the 6 a.m.s, right? Kind of. My my ideal schedule is would be 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday with Nogi Fundamentals, Tuesday, Thursdays at 6 p.m. That's okay. what I'd like to do. With yeah. Koa? I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do, but generally, yeah, I mostly like, do the 6 a.m.s. is like low-key a great coach. He is. He is. He's a great he's coach. He's so quiet, but yeah. he's like... And he's just he's full of knowledge i mean he's he's just as much of a black belt as any of it's us it's a it's a quiet confidence that he yeah. has yeah. and i yeah. really i really admire that about yeah. him yeah i mean all I, I mean honestly like all of the hawaiian like chris is like that honestly yeah. like yeah. he like he like puts himself down a lot mm-hmm. but he's actually really knowledgeable he about jiu jitsu yeah mm-hmm. yeah he's been you doing know? it a long time dude. yeah yeah you know i i, I think he kind of like overshadows his his um his technique, not not uh, his knowledge. He yeah. overshadows his knowledge with his like humor a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, because like Kiola's the same way though. Yeah, Kiola, Kiola will talk a little trash about himself, but he's super technical. They're I mean, all kind of self deprecating. Yeah, right? I guess they are. Yeah, yeah. Kiola, uh, Koa, not so much because he's so quiet. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. He doesn't really talk about anything. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, he, he's a he's a great coach. Um, he was uh one of the guys that took me under his wing when I first started. He was a two stripe blue belt when I started. Really? Yeah. And um, he and I, we basically started the zombie crew. We started the morning stuff because um, that think was he, right after Josh or left, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, no, it was it was before was it before we got Josh? Because that was a white belt. Uh, oh, so Josh was still there. Then. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Koa was, I think he had his third kid at the time. <laughs> third of like fifty. Ah, third <laughs> Those of only, Hawaiians. Only eight. You know you're Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he had a third kid, so he couldn't make it into a lot of classes. Yeah. So we were showing up. We would show up at five a.m. and we would roll for an hour, and he would beat the crap out of me for an hour. It was just, but it was a great lesson I learned because I'm sitting there going, "Man, I'm training. I'm training hard. I'm not getting any better." You know, and it's like I can't match this guy at all. But then I go to a tournament, clean up. Yeah. Just clean up. And yeah. it's so easy, like, if you look at Koa, it's so easy to be like, oh, he's just big. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's actually, no. like, really technical. Super technical, yeah. Like, he's really technical. Like, you'll, like, use, like, a technical, like, like knee cut pass or whatever yeah. on him, and he's got a real technical answer for it, not it, just pushing you off. Yeah, his ability to change directions on his guard pass is ridiculously he good. He is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Surprisingly I enjoy his classes. Good. And, and like, like you're saying, like, he's just so, like, He's just so quiet. Yeah, he's, he's just quite a guy. So yeah. you just like assume that he's just like you know he doesn't have a lot to offer, but he's like he's got a ton to offer. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. totally worth it. Yeah, no, but I was gonna say for especially for someone being as small as you, you should 
definitely take advantage of Josh's classes if you can. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he was on the podcast. It's like, it, there is a world of knowledge, wrestling, jujitsu. Yeah. Like he's got it all in them in there. Grappling. Yeah. Yeah. And he had a, uh, you know, a really good mentor early on, man. Uh, Tom Knox top. I mean, he's one of the top dogs in, in the masters, uh, black belt, uh, divisions. And, um, and now he's working with Q like, yeah, he's working with Q and his, the thing is, like, what I've seen a lot uh, from from the, like, um, like younger competitors at, at the lower belts is they're not very fundamentally sound. Yeah. Josh is very fundamentally sound. A hundred percent. I mean, he has so many little details. It's so easy to just fall. Like, I mean, that was kind of like when we were coming up, it was like, remember Baron Bolo was like the yeah, everyone's yeah. favorite Yeah, yeah. That was my thing. first class. Yeah, and now it's back to being yeah. the thing <laughs> everyone, back. everyone's doing. But yeah. it's like there's people who, like, like I always talk, about, especially right now. Like especially with like you, know, you mentioned Gordon Ryan earlier. It's like everyone wants to know foot locks right now. Yeah, and obviously mm-hmm. like you're a little limited in the gi, right? It's basically ankle locks, toe holds, knee bars. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people are like, "Fuck passing guard! I'm just gonna drop yeah. on this ankle." And it's like, so you don't know how to pass guard, right? So yeah, you find a guy who know either is super flexible and you can't ankle lock him, or they know how to defend the ankle lock, right? Or the knee bar, or the toe hold, or whatever it is. And now you're fucked. Yeah. You're basically just giving a guy a sweep or a pass. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. or a pass. And or a pass. Yeah. Right. Well, and you also have to hope too that they that they give you that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. So like yeah. one of the things that um that chain that I had like a like a level up moment was I was watching Josh's ADCC match, and I was Which watching one? him uh his most recent <laughs> his most recent yeah, yeah. yeah his silver his silver second place match i think at uh, the at the trials at the west yeah, coast trials yeah. yeah no no it was it was no it was his it was at adcc itself oh at the championship yeah at the championship, yeah, at the okay. championship. Okay. so i watched this match and um he uh didn't make he was it was the semifinals where he would have made bronze if he would have won yes yeah. okay. so yeah. i was watching him and i was watching him escape ankle locks yeah and um and i so i watched that and then i went and i rolled against joel and you know joel loves he loves anything with the legs yeah. he's a monster yeah um and he and I kept like I I I just from watching Josh like that one match I just kept slipping out and what I realized I was like and I told him this I was like I was like I you know what I did is I just stopped giving you my feet yeah because mm-hmm. I would I we would sit down and then I would like kind of get a wrist and then I would just try to like pull guard or something and he would just grab my my leg and destroy it yeah. and then I was like what if I just don't give him my legs and he just, <laughs> and then he couldn't do anything. Yeah. So you're like, that's one of those things I think you say, like everyone wants to know that and they're like, Oh, I don't have to pass guard. I'll just grab his legs. So it's like, well, yep. he's got to let you. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, when I was a white belt, like that was like, I was a one trick pony ankle locks, yeah. ankle. I ankle locked everybody when I was, when I was a white belt. Yeah. And uh, it, I, I tell people now all the time, I was like, it's like, trust me. I lived through this. It was like, ankle locks are cool. Heel hooks are cool. Toe holds are cool. Knee bars are cool. They're all fucking awesome. But if you don't know how to pass someone's guard and that's what you, that you're like, oh, I can't pass Del Hiva. Okay, ankle lock. Yep. It's yeah. like, that was me. That was fucking me. Like when I was a white belt, I was yeah. like, oh, I can't pass this guy's guard. All right, scoop. Yeah. And I get the ankle. It's like, you're actually doing more of a disservice to yourself than you think you are. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, take it from experience. It's like, learn how to pass that guard first. Yeah. And, and then and when, worry about all the submissions. And when we first started ten years ago, that was like the the uh, the criticism from the old school guys. Mm-hmm. Like these guys are trying to you know just ankle lock everybody because they can't pass guard. They were right. Yeah, they were right. And yeah. everybody and, shit and, on and them for the it, but they were right. Shit now. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same yeah. shit now. And now we're the old guy. Well, yeah. <laughs> well we <I'm>, are. <laughs> sure. Shit. Oh, I'm an old guy. <laughs> At least yeah. I don't need Viagra. Um, <laughs> I don't hey, either, damn it. I don't hey. either, damn it. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I mean, it's like. I'll it, take it, though. Fuck it. <laughs> Why, Why not? not? <laughs> Let's go, baby. But uh, John uh, Jones said, uh, what did he say? It, it puts a twist into that jab. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have thought a lot recently about um, about Viagra? fundamentals. Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, fundamentals. Um, I, so like, like. When I started, um, you know, I, I did the warrior, like I said, I did the, I did the, the warrior challenge and I did the fundamentals classes, but I wanted more intensity, mm-hmm. but I do. So like I do, I recognize that there's, especially the way you have it structured. There's a lot of value in the, in our fundamentals. Classes. Oh, hundred percent. Like yes. I know, you mentioned. I love, yeah. I love fundies dude. That, that fundamentals class is a, it, there's a curriculum and they have to, it's six weeks, right? Yeah. 13 weeks. Yeah. So it's 13 weeks, but they, but they initially take six weeks and then they, yeah. they I, I, I just love that it, it is structured and it's like, <clears throat> this is what you are going For to learn. For the entire week. Because yeah. I, 
like you know like uh sierra is a good example like sierra and i like always like i'll, I'll post some like silly fucking bullshit trap technique <laughs> like and we're like i'm gonna try this, this week. <laughs> <laughs> like we always yeah. we always find shit like that yeah and we, we post that to each other but it's like it's so easy as like a white belt or a blue belt mm -hmm. or even some purple belts. I, yeah. I think at purple belt, you finally have like caught on to like, Oh, I do. I still need, do need the fundamentals, but yeah. like, it's really easy for like white belts and, and blue belts to like see that cool thing on TikTok, Instagram reels, mm -hmm. YouTube or whatever, you know, yeah. whatever's getting thrown into their, whatever algorithm they're like looking at. It's like, Oh, that's a cool little like trick. Yeah. You know? And yeah. like the cool tricks are awesome. But the reality is, is like you can't get to those cool tricks if you don't have good fundamentals. Yes. Right. Yeah. And and I see those tricks, and I'm like, I wish somebody would try that. Yeah. yeah. I really wish somebody I, like would I, try I, that. I sent to Sierra this one. Like, up. so like one of my favorite things to do in side control is like obviously so feed the lapel underneath the arm, mm -hmm. which acts like basically as an underhook. Yeah. But the guy like, and you know how there's the version where it's either under the armpit where you just it acts like an underhook, or you trap the arm yep. right with the lapel. I love that. So he trapped the arm and then wrapped the guy's arm and then ended up shoulder locking the guy. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> but like, but if you can't get to side control, yep. you can't do any of that or shit. Or if you can't control yep. the, the hips and the he head and shoulders, right. you're never going to achieve right. that shoulder lock. All the lock. cool yeah. flashy shit starts once you get to that position. Like, oh, here's a cool submission for mount. Yeah, guess what, motherfucker? You got to get to mount. <laughs> yeah. And you got to hold it. Yeah, you got to be able to stabilize mount because, like, anybody who's been to mount, like, uh, there's a lot of submissions for mount if the guy just fucking limp fishes. Yes, yeah. if yeah. he puts his arms out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I, I tell people all the time, it's like, I, I hate mount. Well, it's like when Samir was here, yeah. right? You were in the room, yeah. and he was talking about, like, uh, we, we always talk about Hodger Gracie. Hodger Gracie shirt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's he's uh, he's the guy that I study. I study because he's so fundamental. I mean, he rams fundamentals down your throat. Yeah. yeah. That's what he does. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. And what we were talking about is, like, he's known for the uh, cross-collar choke from Mount. And uh, you know how it, people have a hard time defending. And Samir said, well, if you have a guy that can hold Mount for eight entire minutes, yeah, yeah. He's going to eventually get the choke that he wants. Yeah. Most people can't because yeah. they don't know how. They don't know and how like, to hold the position. Man, yeah. that's that's yeah. so true. Or so it's like, true. So that, that West Monroe school I went to is a Cron Gracie black belt. Yeah. Cron Gracie doesn't have very many black belts. No, he does not. He does, I'm surprised they let you wear yours. He normally has a, there's a white belt with a black stripe. Well, in I it. beat the fuck out of him, so he didn't have a <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I doubt that. But, yeah, you're right. No, we had a good role. But, I mean, honestly, it's like, it, it's, there's, there's a lot to be said about like the the, the fundamentals of jujitsu, yeah. and a lot of people just, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What about yeah. this? Yeah, you know, like my my game got way better when I stopped trying to be something I'm not. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not a, fel a flashy, you know, flying whatever. Good looking, good looking, <laughs> successful. Smart. I'm not any of that. <laughs> yeah. Smart. No, when I, I I dumbed my game down, I dumbed it down, and once I I really started focusing on my mount game. I want to get to mount, and I'm going to hold mount. If I can get to mount in 30 seconds and hold you for four and a half minutes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, one of the things that like really struck for me was uh, <clears throat> what I noticed, especially in in like the high, in the really high level stuff, is like a lot of times like we were told like, you know, like you have 10 seconds to establish a game. Yeah, it's like maybe at white belt, three maybe minutes. At blue belt. <laughs> it takes it's me like, three minutes. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> It's like really, it's like the guy who rushes is the guy who loses. Mm -hmm. It's like take your, time take your time to establish your game, yeah. Yeah. right? Like if you're like, say you're, you're trying to knee cut pass, or it's, you're just in some sort of open guard, and you're like establishing, and, and you're trying to get into that knee cut, or trying to get into that torianda, or whatever you're whatever you're trying to do. It's like the guy who tries to rush either any position, any technique. Agreed. If you try to rush that position or technique, you're probably gonna fail. Yeah. Right. It's like. Wait for your window, maybe deep, right? I'm gonna go this way. Oh no, you thought I was, Oop. but I'm really yeah. going this way. Right? Like you gotta like you gotta play that game. And if you play that game in a rush, in a hurry, that's how you that's how you get got. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, I took a lot of those lessons into my 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 work. You know what I mean? Like um, you know, the fundamentals of sales, the fundamentals of, you know, retention, the fundamentals of running a business. There are A B C one, two, threes to everything. And, you know, the one thing that I took from jujitsu that has helped me the most is how to, how to compose myself under pressure. Mm -hmm. Yes. The first thing I do is try to control my breathing. 
Yeah. If you can control your breathing, you're in business, man. You're really, really in business. Literal yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. You really are. I mean, because pressure comes. You know it, right? Oh, yeah. Pressure comes. And a, a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine explained to me, he had a much bigger business than I have, but um, he talked about pressure. <clears throat> he owned an AC business. He sold it for millions of dollars. So good for him. Nice, good for him. But uh, he said there were times he goes, This is pressure. You got fifteen thousand dollars in uh, payroll coming up on Friday, and you got six grand in your account on Wednesday. Right. Yep. That's pressure, man. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had a uh, uh, an avenue, right, to 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 get there, but that's still a lot of pressure. If one thing goes wrong, you're screwed. Yeah. And then you have employees that are pissed, can't pay their mortgages. That's a lot of pressure, man. On yeah. that note, Stephen, have, so have you noticed anything like that? Uh, like. Alex and I have been doing jiu-jitsu for, you know, a decade now. Yeah. Right? Like, in you, a couple of years? A year or About a year? I am 13 months. Yep. 13 yeah. months. Yeah. Okay, so just over a year. Or just 14 now, because it's November. So, yeah, 14. Started 14 September months. of 21. Right. right. Have you noticed anything like how, hey, so, like, one of the things, like, so when I first started jiu-jitsu, like, I came from jiu-jitsu from being, like, a, a, a very avid rock climber is what I is what I'll put it as. Like, I'm definitely not at the professional level. I wasn't getting paid by any stretch of the imagination. But like, that was my my fucking thing. And yeah. like, I remember like Paul used to like like we. I remember like when I was a white belt, we had pans come up, mm-hmm. um, which is like one of the biggest tournaments of the year. Pans and worlds are yeah. like the two biggest tournaments for like gi jiu jitsu. Pans right? worlds yep. Europeans right are the are the biggest tournaments of the year right. And he and he like was like talking to me about like you know my 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 mentality about like going into like you know the, it was like the day of or whatever you're we having like breakfast or whatever and like one of the other people that we were with was like you know they were stressed out about it and he's like oh yeah yeah you you're never you never you never like worry about the like the stress of jujitsu or, or of tournaments and it was like for me it's always been like like coming from rock climbing it was like if I fail, like it's like a big fall and, and a big fall on the outside. I, I, I mean, you, you obviously like can account for like safety. Like it, it's not as dangerous as a lot of people think rock climbing is, but like it still feels that way. Like yeah. there's a, still that visceral fear yeah. of falling yeah. when yeah. you're rock climbing. But like, I feel like a lot of that like translates from jujitsu to real life. It's where it's like, when you go to like a tournament, like you're, you could literally get like hurt, like to the point yeah. where like you yeah. need surgery. I had knee surgery <laughs> last year, right? Yeah. So it's like you can you can like really get fucking hurt in jujitsu. Yeah. Like, but when you go into like negotiations or any sort of meeting with like a client or whatever, and and you're like, come on, it's, it's still like, livelihood. Yeah. Still livelihood. No, I mean, I mean but but my 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 uh, my question is, it's like, so have you noticed that like, uh, have you noticed um a confidence from jujitsu that like has translated into your like, into Ooh. your like business life. Good question. Yeah. What a segue. Perfect. Thanks for teeing that up. Boom. I had, uh, <laughs> there's a story I wanted. One to of stop. us knows how to segue. Damn it. Um, yeah. So I, I told you you could leave. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I are going to take care of this. Uh, so um, this goes back to why I started jujitsu in the first place. Um, and so when I, when I walked into, into a, into Aries East Mesa and, and met with Alex, um, I had been thinking about like, uh, I had heard a lot from Joe Rogan about like uh, there's a really great there's a really great um, like motivational video someone put together of a lot of clip uh, of a lot of clips of, of him just talking about the value of of um, doing something really really difficult yeah and how that translates to like when you deal when you do difficult things you realize that you can and it makes the things that in in your life a lot like the other things that might be anxiety inducing or frustrating or hard seem a lot easier yeah so when I walked in and I was talking to Alex about why I wanted to start jujitsu. One of the things I told him was that, like, I had heard about this concept that, like, if you do something really hard, it's going to make it's going to alleviate anxiety, make things a lot easier in your life. Yeah. But I had told him that I have I had a deep seated fear that it, whenever I came into conflict with somebody, it would get physical and I wouldn't know what to do. Mm. And there's actually like studies, I guess, that show that this is actually a very common thing, mm-hmm. especially among males, that when in negotiations in business, in in any kind of interaction, there is a certain like unspoken dominance uh like like battle for dominance that's even though like that'll never happen in a negotiation completely unlikely yeah Yeah. however however when somebody knows that they're i hate to use the the word inferior but when somebody feels that they are inferior to your abilities to whip their ass 
all of their insecurity comes out. Yeah. Even even yes. if it's not even relevant to the it's conversation. It's not relevant to the conversation, but all of their insecurity comes out. They start uh, belitt- belittling you behind your back. Yep. They start, you know what I mean? I mean it's, it's, and it's, it, it makes me smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they know like, one bad he word. He knows that I'll fuck him up. Yeah, if I have he to. knows. But it's, it's a good thing. Like, yeah. you understand who they are. Uh, at, at, like at a deeper level, right? right? So there's there is like this kind of concept that like when you are in negotiations, when when two people, especially men, are in negotiations, that there is this like there is like a size factor. There's a physical factor that's yeah. happening there, even if it's not spoken, subconscious, even if it's, yeah, yeah, not yeah. acknowledged. Yeah. So, um, but one of the things I mentioned was like that this fear that that I've always had that if I was in a disagreement, just a verbal disagreement with a person, not even like someone giving me shit on the street, but just like when I would try to stand up for myself or um. Or, yeah, you know, or I or I had to disagree with someone. I was just had this fear that it would could get physical, and I wouldn't know what to do. Right. Um, that was gone in like a month. Yeah, <laughs> I a love month it. of getting crushed. Yeah. I was just like, like I'm, I'm, I have almost, I have so little anxiety about anything, and I have like, like I can go and and talk to any, like, I mean, any person. I can just kind of sit down across the table from them and like, like I yeah, like that fear is is definitely not there. And speaking specifically to like. Um, to the, just like the general anxiety of conflict, I have a great story for you that I'm excited I get to share with you here <laughs> that happened to me last weekend. Um, I was running an event and it was in downtown Phoenix. And uh, so it's at, it's at the uh, AE England building, which was, it's a private building that like we had rented out. So then they're very, they're very particular about letting people in from like outside because you get a lot of transients in that area. Sure. Oh, yeah. They go, they get freaky in the bathrooms. It's, it's not good. <laughs> so they're, they're like, you gotta make like, just don't let people in. Right. Yeah. So like we always have someone watching the door. Well, um, a group of people came through and they, it, it was some kind of, there was some kind of March that was happening. Um, and they were asking to like come in and use the bathrooms. And I, and I, I talked to one of the guys who was super nice and I was like, I, I, he was like, can I just like come in real quick? I was like, if I let you in, man, all these people are going to want to come in. And I just like, there's a liability at play here. Um, so I can't do that. I'm, I'm sorry. And he's like, all right, I understand. So I, I start heading back up to the front of the building. Three dudes are like storming in, like, like, <laughs> like we are using the restrooms and no one's going to stop us. And yeah. I was like, and then, and like the guy who was in the lead, he was like, you know, he was like a, like a pretty Jack dude. And it turns out that this was like a, that this was a, they called them um, irreverent warriors was the group, but they're like a veterans group. They were doing some kind of March. Yeah. Um, and, and so like, like I felt bad, but I, I stopped the guys like, Hey man, you can't come in here. I'm sorry. And, and he start starts barking at me, gets yeah. in my face, real pissed, real yeah. angry. And I just had this feeling, man, like this complete calm came over me. Yeah. Like this, I, I just went to this, like, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to fuck this guy up. I wasn't, <laughs> I just had this feeling of like, okay, yeah. Like he's, he's getting in my face. He's yeah. threatening me. I've already told him he can't come through here. So if he tries, I'm going to stop him. Yeah. Or, right. Or if he does, if he tries to, if, if this goes to any kind of physical place, I know, I know what I'm going to do. And I didn't, I didn't have like a game plan. Yeah. I just knew I could handle it. Yeah. And I was so calm. And all I did is I just stared at him. I just stared at him. I yeah. didn't say anything. I didn't move. I just looked at him and he like turns around, starts walking away <laughs> and he turns back around and, and I'm falling behind him. He starts barking at me again. Just, yeah, just going and going, and that same thing. I just stared at him, and yeah. he just walked out of the building. Wow, it's, it's a lot of people just aren't as prepared as they think they are. It's like when we were in Vegas. You remember oh, that? My God, that was we so were in Vegas. We were like literally walking to a fucking candy we're, store. No, we're going <laughs> to get ice cream. Yeah, yeah. or whatever. It was yeah. like C's candy, though, right? Yeah. It's like something like that. Yeah. And this fucking guy, just like we're just kind of walk. It's like this, like kind of like this courtyard area. There's no cars or anything, so we're like all kind of walking. And there's just like these these two dudes that are in front of us, kind of walking. One of them's just fucking piss and vinegar, and they're like <laughs> girlfriends are behind us. It's yeah. like it's just like a conglomeration of people, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, one of them like kind of like stop. They, like I think the 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 nicer guy stops because yeah. yeah. he notices that his girlfriends are behind us. Yeah. Their girlfriends are behind us, so they like stop. And like the the fucking piss and vinegar guy like looks at Alex and it gives him like the fucking stare down and walks down. And I like wa- I'm oblivious by the way. He's yeah, completely no oblivious. Idea, of course. And I look at that guy and I'm just like and then I just like look at him and I just like watch him like kind of give him like the fucking stink eye and I just like shake my head. And then he's like, What what? He starts like starts getting <laughs> yeah. in our face. And Alex is like, You need to walk away. Yeah, you need yeah. to walk away. And and his girlfriend was like she, I had a jiu-jitsu shirt on, and she's like, "Roll Union Jiu-Jitsu, well, what's no, that? No, first of all, she no, at first she was like, 
Oh no no yeah no sorry yeah, sorry sorry yeah, sorry and yeah. then she read it and yeah. then she was like oh she thought we were like hot she, shit and she's then. like what what the hell is that I was like that's an early night for your boy over there that's <laughs> 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 yeah. but it was like it was hilarious it's like my heart didn't even jump a bit. no yeah. it was just stupid and then I'm telling the the nice guy I'm like look. I'm down, dude. Like, let's do this, but we can't see a judge until Tuesday. It's a holiday weekend. We're not going to get away with this. Yep. Just so you know, we're not getting away with this. We're all going to jail. We're going to for jail. a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's cold. Yeah. Trust me. If you have a job, <laughs> you should probably not do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think that, like, and I, I would definitely say, like, I, I, I really feel like I'm kind of um, a great example of what jujitsu can do for somebody because yeah, yeah. I. Like I said, like I, I, I walked into Alex, into Alex's Academy and I just, you know, I had never done a combat sport. I'd been in like two fights in my life. I lost both of them, <laughs> um, miserably. Right. Like I yeah. just, I, I have never, like, I was afraid to stand up for myself. I was, I, I, I had confidence like in so much as like, I, I recognized the, the positive things about myself. I, I, I love myself, but I, I was bad at standing up for myself mm. in, in kind of all areas of my life. Mm. Right. And I mean, that all went away so fast. And even with like, with that interaction I had with that guy, like I was just so calm. I didn't, I wasn't nervous or anything like that. I had a huge adrenaline jump, a dump afterwards. Yeah, like I got yeah. super, I stank for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I had that, that adrenaline sweat. Yeah. Sex appeal. Yeah. 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 No, Surround my women. Baby, you know, <laughs> call your wife. You're like, Hey, I'm coming home. We're putting a baby. In you. <laughs> Here comes number three. <laughs> but I definitely like, I definitely can really, really speak to that i mean everything that anyone has ever heard about jujitsu when they when they hear it when you hear joe rogan go on and on and on about like all the positive things it does for your life i mean it, i don't get ang anxious for anything yeah i just don't i mean yeah. like because there is nothing worse that could happen to me most likely in my day than is worse than what i experienced yeah. at a 6 a.m it's so weird it's, it's yeah. so weird right because like i remember like when i was growing up like doing public speak any sort of public speaking was like Oh my fucking god! I have, <laughs> yeah. to do, I, I have to do this. I have to do this five minute presentation presentation in like my English class or whatever yeah. the fuck it is in yeah. high school or whatever. It's like, <clears throat> but after doing like jujitsu or whatever, and like especially like competing, like I know, and I, I know you haven't like you haven't just quite decided yet whether or not you want to compete or not. But like competing is like in front of like your peers. Like it's yeah. not necessarily like you're not presenting to anybody, but like people are around and they're watching you. Right? right. So like there is that aspect of it, but you're also like putting your physicality out in the world. Yeah. Like it, it's, it, there, it, it's not just like, Oh, I, I might say something stupid. It's like, no, I might get fucking choked out. Well that, you know, you may, you may relate to us to this because of your performances. Mm -hmm. So it's really jujitsu is like a form of self-expression, you know, but you're doing it to an audience that is like knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so very few people at a jiu-jitsu tournament, like especially when you're an adult, yeah, don't train jiu-jitsu. When you're a kid, it's like a bunch of fucking stupid. Parents. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of parents. Yeah, whatever, a bunch blah, of parents blah, blah, blah. and yeah, well, grandparents you know, and aunts and uncles who don't yeah. train. Who don't train. Yeah. But like when you're an adult, like every almost everyone who's watching you probably trains at least a little bit. Yeah. Right? So right. just imagine doing a vocal performance in front of a bunch of like voice coaches. Yeah. That's what it's like. It yeah. really is, right? Yeah. It's 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 especially yeah. when you're like you're compete when you get in like purple belt, brown belt. Like when you're a brown belt, like your black belt coach is like really like not that far above you, honestly. Yeah, and yeah. neither is your opponent's black belt coach. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're almost your peers. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and then once you get to black belt, it's like they are your fucking peers. Yeah. Right. So like so like you know Q, you've met Q before, yes. right? Uh, actually like, no, I haven't met him, but I mean oh, okay. I've watched him through the computer screen as yeah. I did the videos. <laughs> so Q is an amazing person, is, by is the way. He seems he literally like it. Yeah. like my competitive peer. <laughs> right. On paper, which is paper. Fu it's a fucking on, joke. On, it's on a paper. fucking joke. Yeah, because I started jujitsu and Q was already a black belt. Yeah, he's right. he he's a, he's a wizard man. But he is masters two. I'm yeah. masters two. Black belt. I'm a black belt. Fuck. Yeah, and, right. and he won masters worlds. Yeah. Five matches, five subs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, against very, very good black belts. Right. We very have, good black belts. We seem to have, and like, I don't know anything because, again, I'm just a, a guy who's been doing this for 14 months, but like, it seems like there's something special about Arizona yes. Jiu Jitsu. Uh, there is. Recently. There is, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the past, I would say five years, Jiu Jitsu in Phoenix has become not, I wouldn't say it's the Mecca. Like, California is definitely like where most Jiu Jitsu the, is. Uh, Southern California is the Mecca. Yeah. So, the reasons. Cal Another Southern Cal similarity between esports. Yeah. So, so well, Cal's well, the Mecca of esports. Well, yeah. the, the thing about it is when, when the guys came from Brazil, they were all like 
not all, but uh, the majority were you know surfers. They lived they lived on the beach. Mm-hmm. They would they would train and compete, or they would train and teach and then go surf, and yeah. then train and teach and go surf. They can do that in Southern California as well, right? Yeah. So that was a big draw. Yeah, it's very but, similar to their like lifestyle in Brazil. But the uh, the the water in Brazil is much warmer mm-hmm. and less and 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 fewer great white sharks. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> and, but, and yuppies. <clears throat> yeah, but Way um, fewer yuppies. But you had very few guys like venture very far east yeah um the the most prominent guy that ventured you know that far east was like uh, i mean uh, marcelo garcia going to new york, new york uh, shaolin yeah. was in new york as yeah. well and you know there were some guys, guys in new york yep. new york's a big place yep i mean and obviously uh john and her death squad from new jersey started mm-hmm. you know yeah that, that, the, the, henzo henzo gracie that's all over the place yeah. but like it like the don and her death squad started in new jersey and then yeah. they went to puerto rico and now they're in, in austin yeah yeah but, but we're, i mean when you talk about early on the 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 the, the um <clears throat> the the foundation of jiu jitsu in Arizona started with Megaton and uh, and Gustavo Dantes. Yes, yeah. two very very legit black belts. And I would Le- uh, I would argue legit. Carlos Faria is in there. Carlos Faria is in there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's a good argument to Car- make. I would I would say <clears throat> Carlos Faria is a little more niche because Carlos Faria is a big guy, so he has like big guy jiu jitsu, but he's very good. That is probably the most athletic big man you'll ever train against, especially recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, even when he was, when he was bigger. Yeah. He was very athletic. Yeah. Um, you but, might, do you, are you familiar with Carlos Faria? I am not. So he was, he was, he's an ultra heavy, um, great fucking coach. Yeah. Um, but as of like maybe the past two years, I think since COVID, he like cut down to like. Under 300. So, so, so ultra heavy is what, 230 and 220. above? 220. Yeah, 220 and plus. above. Right, and he was like the top end, like yeah. closer to okay. 300. Yeah. Now he's like a fit fucking like 230. Yeah. And he is a monster. Yeah. He's a monster. You know who gets overlooked, though? Jay Pages. He's Jay, been around a long Jay's time. Jay's been dude. a long time. Been around a long time. And Jay is really fucking good. He's fucking good. And, and his really coaching style good. is awesome. Yeah. I really enjoy, like, when he did seminars and stuff, so much fun. And so he's a fun. nice dude. He's a great dude. Jay's a nice dude. I remember the first open mat I went over there, and he was just super fucking welcoming. Yeah. 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 Jay's, Jay Page, uh, so he's out in Ahwatukee. Um Nice, nice, nice dude. Great, great yeah. guy. So he started out. His school was. Uh, I love the old location. It was just small. Yeah. It was off of like uh, it was Kyrene and Chandler Boulevard. Remember that little spot that he yeah. had, and that was like like now they're Elliot and I ten right. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, so they're a little bit at much. I mean, probably the biggest mat space in the valley. Nice. Uh, Q has the biggest mat. Space. I don't think so, man. I bet Jay has a bigger mat space. Really? It's it's close, but I think Jay's got him. He's got a shit ton of mat. Because Jay has that big spot in his lobby, yeah. and then he's got another spot on the side, and then his main mat space. He's got a lot yeah. of mat space. Maybe man. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have the biggest mat space. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I get my fifteen thousand, you're gonna buy that foot. State Farm insurance <laughs> bullshit next someday, time. man. Someday, but uh, but yeah, sweet. Um, you know uh, the found uh, like like you were saying, it, you know. I don't know that it's the Mecca. I don't know yeah, that I yeah. would say that. It but just, I, but it's special. It like, is. I I can see that, and, and again, my like with my limited knowledge, I just can see by the like even with the the big four podcast you did mm. that like the amount of knowledge that is just centralized here oh, yeah. in Phoenix is yeah. it really seems like special when you've got like a one dude is a ten time world champion, yeah, and then you've got you, you know you've got Q said five times five time world champion. Well, we have a Q, lot of or, yeah. big. Fucking names. So yeah. we have Gustavo Dantes. Yeah. For for sure. Cachenio. For Me- sure. Megaton. Tanquino. Tanquino. Another one that's overlooked. You forgot overlooked. about Tanquino. Another one that's Tanquino overlooked. Tanquino is a fucking monster. Mostly Nogi. Fought in UFC. Yeah. Fought in ADCC UFC. champ. Yeah. Fucking monster. Oh, yeah. no, no. By the way, recent ADCC champ. And and, and we all like to, like, try and push this aside. But the Gracie Baja here. Yeah. Is huge. fucking Huge. Good. Dude, Flavio, Flavio Almeida, is here. He's, he's the man, dude. Yeah, it and just it just seems like, like a superhero. It just yeah. seems like there's something like there is kind of something special happening in Arizona. And I mean, look at like look at like Aries East Mesa. Like yeah, like you were talking about how your kids' class, or like uh, we were talking earlier about how the how our our kids' team is number one in the state. Yeah, right. And like I hear a lot of stories about our people going to tournaments and doing well and placing well and yeah. winning. And like I don't. I assume it's not that way at every school. It's not that way at every in right. every state, right? Yeah. Like, um, so it just seems like there's something special here with yeah. the with the yeah. people who are here at this time. Yeah, and and you know one of the big differences is we don't push people to compete. Yeah, we really don't. Like, I don't. You know, at when when we were coming up, it was like, hey, did you sign up yet? Yeah, that was like yeah. literally like I've been training three days, but okay. 
you know, but it was just like, take numbers, bring numbers, bring numbers, and we would win. But with us, it's like, hey, if you want to compete, cool. If you don't, cool. I don't care. Either way. I don't care. I'll love you either way. We're all right. going to train hard. We're all going to train hard. Yeah. But there's just something like that kid's class has gelled so well that, man, it's that, that Which is bond, testament to Yaya. She's amazing. She she's is. amazing. She's great. And, and, da- and my, my son Dax loves her. He's, <laughs> he says she's the greatest it's, thing ever. It, well, it's yeah. because she's a kid. <clears throat> she's a kid. <laughs> but, but, you know, she's an adult. She's an adult, but she grew up. Adult kid. <laughs> she grew up in the kids program. Yeah. Like her parents own, owned an academy in Japan. And then they owned an academy when they moved here. Wow. And, man, she's she's just grown up in that when world. When are you going to get her on? I, she oh. won't do it. She won't? She's shy. She's been in the room twice. Dude. She I, won't okay. do it. I got that. I, have, I will take care of that. <laughs> I did not know that she was, like, an influencer, too. Oh, like, yeah. She's a big deal on Instagram. Oh, absolutely, so, man. And she's absolutely. got a couple sponsorships and stuff. And Yaya, yeah. Yaya oh, work it. or Yesenia, for those who don't know, is a fucking sweetheart. She, she is. is. Yeah. yeah. And she's a monster on I've, mats. I've too, known man. her forever. She calls you grandpa. Yeah, she calls me grandpa. I'm good with that. Yeah. I uh, I I uh, saw a reel of her um, at a competition once. It was like a highlight reel she did. And I sent it to my wife, and I was like, "That's out. That's Dax's coach." And she's like, "What the fuck? She's really good." Because yeah. it was that one reel she has where she's like, "She." You should um, roll with her. Yeah. Oh my god. You should roll. With I, her. I have rolled with her. Oh, bro. I think I rolled with her one time. Oh really? Like, okay. Maybe. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Because yeah. I think she was teaching. She was teaching a class. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, but she's I, tough. I should. Yeah, she's tough. Because I think she'd crush me. She's just like upside down or anything. You're like, what the? Fuck? She's on, she gets on your back and you're not getting her off. Yeah. You're not getting her off her back. Yeah. Dude, Sierra's. I think Sierra's that way too. Yeah, Sierra's, Sierra's tough. Good too. She's so Sierra's fast. getting there. Yeah, Sierra's getting there. She's crazy, dude. She's, she's like, very I watch her roll and she's like, she's, <laughs> she's just yeah. like spinning underneath people. I'm very and stuff. proud of her. But yeah, I mean, it's um, I didn't realize that she was like an influencer and stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got Liz Clay coming on the on the podcast tomorrow. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Liz that's gonna be a good one. Yeah, Liz yeah. is awesome. Liz is Liz's, Liz's like game is shit, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, uh, she won uh, ADCC trials as a sixteen-year-old blue belt. Damn. Yeah, that's not an easy thing to do. So that's yeah, crazy. I'm excited to get her on the podcast. But yeah. uh, I love rolling with Liz. Yeah, no, she's great. Because uh, you know, it's it's fun to roll with people who are like, spe- especially people who are smaller than you. You're like. Oh, I'm I'm gonna have to go light on you a little nope. bit. It's like, nope, you're giving her. 100%. You're about to get killed, or you're fucked. Yeah, you're about to get killed. Yeah, it's yep. fun to roll with people like that. You know, you're like, oh, we're going, we're going 100. You going 100? We're going 100. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it. So, so Liz was staying with me, uh, me and Amy, when uh, we were all getting ready to go to Pans in uh, 2020, and then it got shut down. Ah. Uh. And uh, so, couldn't get a flight out because. You know, they were still trying to figure that out. Yeah. So she stayed a little bit longer, and uh, all we did was train. Yeah. You know, that's all we did. At, we just, well, at the drink. Ensings, right? Yeah, we would drink here and then go train at the Ensings. Yeah, her and her brother, who is also a fucking savage <laughs> yeah. animal. Yeah, I should get them both on. That would be fun. That would be awesome yeah, to have both of them. Fun. Yeah. Dave, I, I, have you met Dave? I don't know. No. I don't think so. So Liz and Dave look no, like. No, I have not. Yeah, I have not. So the way I describe Liz and Dave, they are the last thing that a villager sees when ships hit. The shore? They're fucking Vikings. They're Vikings. <laughs> they're, yeah. they, they're just going to kill everything yeah. Yeah. In, this, in sight. They're just leading the, and they're Dave leading is the like charge. a sweet kid until you fucking roll with him. He's still a sweet kid, but he'll kill you. No, he'll he's not. You. There's nothing <laughs> sweet about him when you're rolling with him. Yeah. You rolled, he like, <clears throat> I can't remember if he beat the shit out of you or beat the shit out of Paul. It must have been Both you. Us. I think it was you. Both and then us. I was like, yes, maybe he's tired. And then I rolled with him. <laughs> nope. I'm like, me, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he does not get tired. Yeah. He, All he, right. But, but he, he's, he's a sweet kid. I mean, honestly, they're both sweet kids. Yeah. And they just will fucking kill you. All right. I'm going to call it. All right. We're going to call it. What's, what's the record? Is it 230? 230. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get you next time. We got, no, no, wait, no. We got nine minutes. We can get nine minutes. We can do nine minutes. Nine we can minutes, do nine minutes. Fucking pussy. Well, listen, I'm trying. I'm to get... already out. F- well, okay. Was it? 7:30? Listen, you're going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I don't want to get in trouble. All right, no, I'll be get in, in trouble. trouble. Be in trouble for ten minutes. No, no, it's not worth it. All right, here we go. It's not worth it. <laughs> We're going to do the lightning round. We'll of get questions. it next time. There's yes. a lot to cover still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to do the lightning rounds. You ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Name a game show you think you'd actually win. Jeopardy. What's your favorite cheat meal? I don't have cheat meals. What's the longest you've gone without brushing your teeth? Three days. What's a dumb song you secretly like? So it's not a dumb song, but it's like the one, like you always say, it's the one you'd play in the car, but you don't think yep. uh, you wouldn't let, you wouldn't tell everybody you listen to it. It's the yep. next episode by uh, Dr. Dre and Ooh, Snoop Dogg. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, a normal good one. Song. That's, that's a, a great, one. it's a phenomenal song. Yeah. It's mine? one of those Wrecking songs ball? where I Come feel on. like people would be like, be like, <laughs> give me the side eye if they saw me bump into that one. You know? right, so I don't that know. Word, though. What's your go-to karaoke song? Um, shit, I have so many of them. 
Ooh, or I really? used to. Well, I oh. used to, yeah, back in the day when I was doing the sing, when I was singing oh, a lot, that's right? right? Like, that's it's right. time for a Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. we gotta do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. I'm yeah. down. Um, White belts all have to do karaoke. Yes. Okay, there's a lot of choices. What's your go-to? Like your go-to? Like this is the one you'll nail. If you know you're gonna fucking yeah. nail it, in you're front gonna of nail everyone. it. Like let's, let's say you're not married and you're trying to pick up a girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, shit, this is gonna. T- sorry, this I'm blanking on this. And one. you have to it's sing not it. lightning round. She thinks my tractor is sexy, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. That I would... actually want to hear that. that I want to hear it. I Let's can't. Do I'm it. not too good on the high notes, but the rest of it's a fucking All right. Blast. I don't give a fuck. I want to hear it. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you sleep in or nap? Uh, sleep in. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. DC or Marvel? Marvel. Fuck do you yeah. use a public restroom or hold it? Public restroom. Do you want to go into the future or back in time? Into the future. Rolling Stones or Elvis? Elvis. What's your favorite childhood TV show? Oh, I have so many. X Men. Oh, X Men's a good one. X Men is a good one. Spider Man actually was my favorite, but whatever. <laughs> um, I I was a like a connoisseur of children's television, so I watched a lot of television. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. watched a lot as a kid. Um, what's one that I? There was one I just was actually like revisiting. Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that show kicked ass, dude. <laughs> With I, the little fuzzy dog. And it was like, I, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I, w- I wish I would have discovered weed like back then. When I was oh, like, my oh, God. Dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> um, let's see. Absolute favorite children's show was probably um, Cowboy Bebop. Oh fuck oh, yeah! You know ah, Cowboy Bebop. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah let's go! Fuck yeah! Oh, yes, okay. yes. Do you know no that? Do you know that? Okay, okay. No, you he's too old. He's too old. Anime. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's shit. actually not a kid's show, but you watched it as a kid. Oh, it's it was very on much not a kid's show. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. there's there's me with the big tits. Oh, you'll love it. You'll <laughs> Bro, love it. It's good. It's yeah. so good. It's Cowboy a, it's Bebop. A space Western. Okay. Ed and I are the best. Ed and I. Yeah. Ed and I are the best. Yeah. Yeah. Spike is Spike is legit, man. I love it. All right. I love Cowboy Bebop. I don't even know if I would consider. How old is that? Uh, it came out in two, like two thousand three ish. It's 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 about twenty years old. I don't know if that would consider that kids though. I'm that's figuring not ninety show. shit is kid stuff. You're my you're my generation. That's yeah. high school. It's also extremely adult, so it's not a kid. Actually, <laughs> you just I talked about big high, tits. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> well, I mean, all anime is kind of like that, right? All it the is. women have huge bouncing tits, and so yeah, anime. that is true. That's yeah. Japan for you, yeah. right on. So. All right, everybody. So if you love the podcast, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, follow us on Instagram at the BJJ Foxcast. Follow us on uh, Facebook. We have a Facebook page, page as well. I have a um, website that I put no time into, so don't go to that one. Um, but thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys doing this. At Just Tojo. <laughs> just a, yeah how do they find you how do they find your business uh business is sak gaming tv on all the socials and then i personally am uh shack underscore gg on all the socials right on man well, thank yeah. you guys i appreciate you guys coming on and uh this was a blast good Thanks. stuff thank man. you man it was great right on. All right, bye. that's fucking awesome dude. that was great yeah that was phenomenal how far did we go how long did we go i hope you got 20